and welcome to Davy Forum's podcast, streaming live on Wednesday, the 16th of December. And joining me on this edition, Steve Withers. Do you admit the Brazilian prostitutes were a mistake? Ed Selly. I've gone and spent most of my adult life with a chubby employee. Tom Davies. <laughs> Just because it's Christmas. <laughs> that was really good. Uh, Cass Allen. There was more than one lobster present at the birth of Jesus. And Mark Putright. I look quite pretty. You do, Mark. I love that. I feel bad for the people listening to the audio because that bit compl- it was just dead air for them. Yes, dead air. It, it was, yeah. They'll have to watch the video. There's no excuse. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was actually video. watching the image and I thought, oh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we're streaming once again. This is the Christmas special. So um, we've all brought our toys in. We're all going to play with our games and stuff and and just not do the usual stuff. Well, we're going to do some yeah, of the usual some stuff. Of the usual. Um, but yeah, it's going to be um, off tangent <clears throat> quite a bit this evening. Uh, we're going to talk about this year, which has been a complete not a disaster. Which you really <laughs> look at. Um, I, I wouldn't talk about this year too much if I was you. Let's just get on to next no, year. No, 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 no. We'll talk about next year. And Steve's desperate to talk about Disney. Steve's got uh, quite a bit of Disney stuff. He even created a spreadsheet. That's how <laughs> a spreadsheet of all the new Disney releases. That's how I mean. excited Steve is about. So we'll do that a little bit, little bit later on. But if you are um, watching us on YouTube, uh, then thank you very much for joining us live here this evening. Uh, it is appreciated. I see there's lots of you here this evening. So thank you very much. Please like the video. Um, it does help us if you like the video it helps the search algorithm and all the thing that YouTube does and it means that people can find us and join our AV cult and become a cult member. One of us One, One of, of us. us. For the greater good um, If you are watching, like I say click the like button um, do uh, the bell thing that Steve always says that you should do because what does it do uh, well, Steve? Well it sends you, send you notifications like for this about yeah. 15 times before it actually starts. <laughs> but it wants to make sure you so, don't miss you know, any Subscribe, seconds. hit that bell, and yeah. like. If you could do, do that, that'd things, be great. If, uh, if you appreciate the forums and our editorial content and our videos and everything else that we do, then, of course, you, uh, you can become a patron. Uh, you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash AV forums. If you want to automatically support us at three pounds per month, which is good value because uh, there's lots of competitions that you could enter. Mm. And three pounds is good value because I think the odds usually are around about six to one, aren't they, Kaz? <laughs> uh, we, we've, we've, we've worked this out over the last few weeks. So there you go. You could do it just for that. Yeah, there, are, there aren't music. many... There aren't many entries for each of them, so uh, it's pretty yeah. good odds you're going to win something good. Yeah, there's some good stuff in there. So that's patreon.com forward slash AV forums. Um, or if you want to ask us a question or you just want to give a donation of any size, just a one-off, you can do that through streamlabs.com forward slash AV forums. Like I say, any amount you like. Um, and it's a perfect way to get your question answered as well. If you've got a question this evening, uh, if you do that, it pops up on screen, it flashes the notification and we don't miss it. We can then answer you. Uh, your questions. If you are watching us live, of course, use the chat window. Um, we'd like to see what you're talking about between yourselves, and obviously you can ask us questions as well. Like I say, end of the year, so what's uh, what's been good for you this year in terms of AV? <laughs> Has anything been good for you yeah. this year? I just brought mine out. Has anything good happened to anybody? I'd like to hear it, really. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. I think that lockdown has been amazing in terms of family time. I've spent mm. so much time with the family. I think you might I be in the minority. Though. You might be. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But I, I, I can't I, believe everyone's going like, oh, no, you know, we can't have a traditional yeah. Christmas. Good. Who yeah. wants to trace over to some relation's house anyway? Yeah, I, I meant... I can spend I it sat in my home cinema. That will be the perfect Christmas. Gorging liked, on food and chocolates. I did like That's Christmas, it. isn't it? I did like how the rules that were brought out were kind of, right, you can't have go around to elderly relatives. You can't do singing. Steer clear of board games. If they've just gone, you can't eat Brussels sprouts either. I'd have known it was a wind up. <laughs> All I want to know is can I just eat so much food that I can barely move at three o'clock in the afternoon and spend the entire day watching loads of films? If I can still yeah. do that, it's yeah, a traditional sure. Christmas. How well. is that different from That's any different day of lockdown for you? Day. Well, no, no. I don't yeah. gorge normally. I'm not a gorger. More sprouts. A belcher right. or a bellower. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no. Um, yeah, Christmas, Christmas Day, you know, that's, from when I was a kid, it was always the same. Stuff yourself till you're really sick. Eat loads of sweets from about 5 a.m. Yeah, that was the thing. You'd always the have the giant, in the afternoon. <laughs> giant tube of Smarties by about 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and yeah. So you want a sugar rush by 8 o'clock. Serious crash by about 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. 
so, get dragged off to church, which you didn't want, which I never wanted to do. I managed to talk my dad into taking us to midnight mass. So we get out of the way. Oh, you see, I actually, I did, <laughs> at like I used, midnight. I no, did, we didn't. Used to grow up like in class, we didn't do any of that. Oh, we did. We did it. We didn't do midnight, but we did Christmas Eve and Christmas blasting, Day. Is it? No. It, it's it, it there's a yeah it, I don't, it's not necessarily tied to, i mean the midnight services it was more a case of it there was a class thing because it was about making sure that you were seen to be there so that there was no there was no muttering behind oh, the yeah my, thing, or in my yeah. case going through the motions because i didn't believe a word of it but i was only being forced As the local, oh, do you know i don't but I'm, I'm exactly the same but i do enjoy it, it singing a good carol i'm not 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 afraid to admit that if, yeah, if we just company, uh, we just come off carols on the doorstep. And if it you're in, in the company of people who can also sing, I mean, if you're trying to do carols with people who are tone deaf, it's horrendous. But that's oh, well, that that's nice to everything. Yeah, that's me. I can't sing, but I do enjoy a, a good caroling. Yeah, we uh, yeah. we had the first Noel, and that's the best carol. So that was good. Yeah. Unfortunately, I've spent time in a car with Steve trying to sing. <laughs> it's not. Where? Yeah. That? Oh, what, what Vegas, and then. Yeah, you were singing uh, Mannix. Or something. No, Ed oh, had mm. stuff. I can't remember Ed what it was, but yeah. I mean, obviously, to be fair, we were also murdering Sunshine on Leithville. So our, yes, our, oh, well, our, yeah. our scope for, for, for judging. Was for, yeah, yeah, but I think I was in music. tune. Yes, oh. we were, weren't you? But what was the frequency, Ed? A coyote. I can't remember what it was. 102 something, wasn't it? Yeah, the, co- <laughs> the, the coyote. coyote. Are, are they still need a decent internet radio stream because I'd never listened to anything else. <laughs> um... <laughs> Anyway, um, if you want to become a patron, uh, <laughs> I told you, I told you ahead of time that we were, every off, penny. <laughs> we were going to go off on a tangent. Uh, but we've got three new patrons, so we need to introduce them and we need to thank them for the support. So, Matthew, thank you very much. He became a patron this week. Uh, Soren Modolski, I think I've said that right. Modolski. If I haven't said that correct, then sue me. <laughs> You're um, in the past. <laughs> But thank you very much for your support. It is appreciated. And that's not my name. Very clever. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you again for your support and becoming a patron. So three new patrons. A uh, few new possibilities for the competitions. Um, <laughs> Those odds, they narrow also. gently. If you time. have supported us, uh, thank you very much because it does help us grow the forums, uh, improve the site speed, features, editorial content, news reviews. And one day... We might do the perfect. This might be the perfect podcast. We don't know. We haven't done it yet. So, yeah. if everyone is drinking as much as me, I mean, that's the people listening. It might be a perfect. So, so podcast. we need to do your bits first, do we? No, I'm. I, 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 my 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 lifting in this podcast is pretty lightweight. But the, the other thing is, there's six of us. The whole idea is that we're split. You know, very few of us have to do any serious heavy lifting in this one. I, so I miss the days when you were doing the five two, and and we <laughs> know at the end of the hour, Ed's crashing. <laughs> That was, yeah, that was a mistake. I mean, obviously, I was thinner than I am now, so it wasn't that much of a mistake. But you know, yeah, that didn't wasn't wasn't ideal. But yeah, no, uh, by the end of the, by the end of the podcast, I was in a, a spot of honour. <laughs> So before we go any further, um, just about housekeeping to do. So obviously this is the last podcast of the year. It's our Christmas special. We're like I say, we're going to go off tangent and all the rest of it. We should be back for CES. CES is going to be a bit different this year. Um, so we'll be back for that round about, I think, the 12th of January. Press day is on the 11th. The last press conference is at 10 o'clock at night, UK time. Um, so things have been brought forward enough, but I think... Myself and Steve will need a little bit of time to process what's been said, what's been released and so on. So we're going to do the 12th. Or in my case, to read the news the following morning. <laughs> yeah, I know. I knew that's what you were going to do, Steve. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, we'll, we'll do CES on the 12th. So that's when the podcast will come back. And then we'll come back with our regular podcast on the 20th. So the following Wednesday after that. So we're going to have a little bit of a break over uh, Christmas and New Year, but I think we've deserved it. I really do. It's been one of them, one of them years. So, uh, Tom's on the podcast this week. What have you been doing, Tom? Oh, that's a good question. I um, have not been doing very much writing for the site over the past couple of weeks because I've been flat out at my day job. So that's not super exciting. Um, I have been playing in my downtime a lot of video games that maybe we'll get to talk a little bit about later, um, and enjoying my new collection of the Lord of the Rings trilogy steelbooks bit by bit. You know, half a movie every day for a week. It worked out really good. Um, that's, <laughs> that's about it. I'm not leading a very interesting life at the moment because things are. I don't think anybody is at the minute, Tom. So don't worry. <laughs> so that's me done. Honestly, move on. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mark, nice to see you. It's been a few weeks since you were last on. So what have you been up to? Um, well, uh, plumbing. 
I've got a broken washing machine right now. Oh. And I'm pretty sure you were doing some stuff like this last time you were I, on. I think it's a never-ending project. It, yeah. Well, I've I, I found out that we've got, I think, a, approximately about seven stopcocks in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. All, all of them are seized in one way or another. Whoa. A strange sludge goes into the washing machine. And I refuse to. I refuse to, <laughs> to call out for a repair man when I think if I if I watch enough kind of YouTube t- DIY tutorials, technically that makes me qualified. So I, I'm going to give it a good bash. What was that retro computer, vintage computer game? You know, with the pipe, you had to <laughs> yeah. to put the piping in to get the sludge from one end to the other. I mean, <laughs> I'm assuming that you've got some practice in this. I mean, do you think that there are seven stopcocks because one would seize and they go, oh, bollocks. And instead of trying to fix it, they just add another stopcock. That's exactly actually, what they've done. What you need to do is actually add an eighth stopcock. No, what they've done is also they've, bu- they've built a wall too close to one, so you can't actually turn it round. <laughs> then another one, the end of the tap, I, I was really pleased because I clamped it with a, with a kind of wrench and managed to turn it round. And after about the 15th turn, I thought, this shouldn't be happening. And it was just the main part is seized, and so therefore you can't get anything from that. And it's a case of if I'm getting someone in to do one bit of plumbing, I know they'll just say, take it all out, you know? So all good fun. That's it. Pipe mania. Thank you, Richard. I'm yes. very much looking forward to re-editing this podcast uh, it, to include the, like, just put together the words, take it all out, eight seized cocks. <laughs> 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 well, okay, that's the Christmas edit, sort of. Out of context, this is interesting. Mm. It always oh. is, every week, out of context. Steve, what have you been doing? Actually, I, I obviously had a similar week to Tom. Uh, I've been working my way through The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings films. Uh, which has taken a while, <laughs> but uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's, I, I felt I was surprised at how much I enjoyed The Hobbit this time around. Um, still too much padding, still way too much CG. Um, and the picture looks a bit, you know, it, it looks a bit digital because it's obviously shot digitally and, and it's just a wash with CG and every single shot's got something in it. The but, GoPro um, put it, the sorry, the GoPro. Well, that really footage. stands out, but that stood out. That's always stood out as being yeah. obviously GoPro footage. So um, terrible. It's only a couple of shots, luckily, but yeah, that was a mistake on their part. But well, there was um, an issue. There was an issue with the red uh, camera as well, wasn't it? In terms of color, they had to color the. Oh, well, they had to center. color everything ridiculous colors to make yeah. it register on on. Well, I couldn't say on film, but on the chipset uh, yeah. as approaching normal. So, um, but the soundtracks are absolutely ballistic. I really love those. Um, I thought the uh, Lord of the Rings films looked absolutely stunning. Um, I really d- d- thought they looked better than well, The Hobbit. I read opinion. that. I haven't seen them yet, but I, I am reading a lot of comments about um, that it's a 2K upscale. And a lot yes, of, I'm pretty uh, sure what they've done is they've scanned the, um, the negative that was created for release. So in other words, it's um, based on the 2K DI. I don't, but, but, you, but there are times where I look at it and think, oh, I don't know, there's a lot of detail on that image. Um, particularly if it's just a simple shot of, you know, what about DNR? Because yeah. there was talk again. I, Jackson. I mean, yeah, well, people like to moan and bitch on the internet because that's all they've got to do. But frankly, <laughs> every shot on my projector looked absolutely stunning. It's it gorgeous, like film, like the colours, the HDR. It it was gobsmacking. When, I, you, can, I just, when you can see the stitching in people's gloves and and yeah. any any shot of anyone holding the ring, it just looks incredible. The internet's I, I, full of pricks who are only happy well, in them. Oh, I know, Steve. God. Yeah, <laughs> it's Christmas. I mean, <laughs> it's true. It's fact. But personally, uh, the only thing I will say, though, is that, yes, they have filtered out some of the low end because there's definitely not mm. as much bass in the Lord of the Rings soundtracks. We saw the graphs. Yeah, have you seen the graphs? From using the same scene for a test scene in the past. Um, well, well, I mean, when it comes to frequencies, Richard Sims is excellent because he's also come up with the frequency for uh, the radio station that we're talking about. And Richard's oh, yeah. always the one that, that posts the graphs. So thanks for that, Richard. One yeah. or two point seven. There you go. He's, he's yeah. also explained oh, how he does the graphs, hasn't he? And yeah. The ridiculously so, well. difficult and impossible to replicate. <laughs> but. Uh, as in, we don't have the time yeah. to do all that. Yeah, I, 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 I love them. I thought the films are an amazing achievement, and they stand up today. Yeah, right. good stuff. Ed, uh, I bought a hundred pounds worth of wine um, on a whim. Uh, that needs uh, a little context. How many bottles does that equate to? Seven. <sighs> Make a song um, about this. 
You're a uh, little further out than me in my three ninety nine bottles of Lambrick. Well, furthermore, yeah. one of the bottles actually no, it must be no, sorry, it's one hundred and twenty pounds. But one of the bottles is thirty seven pounds, and it's my father's Christmas present, and actually represents good value at thirty seven pounds. If like him, you can tell the difference between them. Uh, I've taken more of a punt on the ones that I've bought because who knows what'll happen. But I just figured that you know um, my Christmases were going to be very. Uh, contained uh, i'm not going down to my parents we're going to keep them isolated they have each other my brother is joining me i'm going down to collect him and i just thought we just ought to try drinking some different things so i've got some other different things in um uh so but no i've got i've I picked up some interesting it, wine so different different ways to get lashed basically yeah well that and you know fundamentally we're just going to argue about music for four days but you know um <laughs> it, it, <laughs> and we have no problem with that but you know it, it needs a little lubrication um i've been practicing making yorkshire puddings because i haven't actually made my own for donkey's years they're easy uh, the, no, the trick is it's making sure that the to, oven is really really hot before you it's, put well in. yes they're, they're, it's easy to make acceptable ones i'd like to make some well, good no, ones mine always rise really well. I, I always make a crack well, okay fine well i'll i'll invite okay. you to, you can you can make me some bloody ones on christmas day then it's a we bit of a that thing. batter till it's really fine and will someone post steve boiling hot star, please <laughs> um and uh the other other thing is one uh, phil uh will only be interested in nobody else uh today it, there was an absolute deluge um well at the point where i collected my son from school and uh, it was the first time where I was a, a properly reminded that my car has 290 brake horsepower going through the front wheels because I left a roundabout and then all of the lights came on and it went in a completely different direction to the one that I intended it to go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was momentarily exciting. But now, other than that, um, I've just been doing uh, loads of review stuff for you and other people. It's been really busy, um, which I'm delighted about. Um, it's not a secret. I do technical support for another company, and um, there's been lots of pre-Christmas inquiries from that as well, some of which are remarkable. And um, yeah, uh, that, that's me. It, it's good. I'm, 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 I'm in the run into Christmas now. I'm in a good place. Okay, well, do us a favour, Ed. And yeah. ang angle your computer down slightly because we're, we're um, slowly, you're slowly disappearing off. I'm slowly <laughs> slouching my way off. The, there we go. I didn't... Yeah, there you go. Kaz, what are you up to? Well, uh, it's it's the usual as everybody. It's been work and gearing up for the kids being on holiday. But I have, I have, and I, I've kept quiet about it. I've been working on it with the kids. I finished Top Trumps. Top Trumps. Okay, they've just <laughs> got to be laminated. So, oh God, laminators! People and, lose lose hands in those. And they they've been somewhat influenced by um, by what I've been reviewing very recently. So the last of the V8 interceptors. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, we well, com um, completely made up figures. Yes. <laughs> 180 yeah. miles. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 180 miles an hour. Power a thousand. Well, because let's face <laughs> it, we can quote from the film. It's six, 600, 600 at the wheels, which is improbable, but that would equate to what? I mean, unfortunately, John Best, I don't think he does live. That would be 680 at the crank. If I, so I, so I would think amounts. that... Uh, Sorry, I, mean, I just heard... Blah 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 blah. Yeah. I spent some time researching it, and I looked into maybe some mods they might have made because it got destroyed twice and rebuilt twice. Yes, so in, a, in, in a post rounded it up wasteland. A, yeah, <laughs> I, I rounded yeah. it up to an even thousand. So, so what's it running on? Because fuel doesn't last that long. It's only got a, a, a shelf life of uh, months. Or yeah, it's yeah. Uh, to be honest. This is but this is the great disappointment about the post-apocalyptic world that we're, at best we'll be driving this and Leafs. Um, well, this year has been a good test of bicycles. how long fuel can last sitting in a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, no, that's, I, yeah, that's true. It's, it's, it's true. I mean, I mean, Steve, how many miles? How many miles do you reckon you've done this year? Um, well, uh, not much. A, a couple of jobs where I've had to drive a few hundred miles, you know, for for a conversion. Oh, well, that's something, like that. I suppose. But, but generally, yes, generally, I, I mean, three or four months on one tank of petrol. Yeah, Easy. I'd say yeah. something like during, that. During but lockdown, it was something like that. But I have done, I know exactly how many miles I did, 7,500 and odd. Since I collected, wow. the, since I got this car on June the 4th, I've done 3,902 miles. Yeah, that's not too bad. <laughs> that's considering a school we, run, maybe. Considering we, we work from home, that's that's not bad at all, is it? Yeah, so. but, but most of those have been done at 30 miles an hour, which I'm sure is absolutely brilliant for the brilliant for the car. <laughs> you know, a <laughs> nice cold, cold journey. No, a nice cold journey from the house to the school. 
leave it for a bit, bring it back cold, maybe having to get back for a courier, so going the fast way, so taking it to 5,000 RPM cold. So, yeah, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure the next owner is going to love me um, as bits of it fall out. So, you know. But. Yeah, you don't worry about the next owner, do you? Exactly. Uh, right, so thanks for that, Kaz. Uh, my new phone arrived at last, so I got mm. my, uh, my uh, 12 Pro. Got to say, the cameras are absolutely fantastic, right? But the best thing was I got Apple TV free for a year. Yeah. It's, no. uh, as I say, I, I'm thinking about buying another random accessory for my iPad because I've been another <laughs> year on that. Yeah, so. um, not a lot of choice there, but I did watch... Um, uh, For All Mankind. The, no. Um, no, it was after... I watched Mandalorian and I thought, I'll just sample some something off Apple TV. So I watched uh, the Beastie Boys story. Ooh, yeah, was, that's actually really good. It was really, really good. That's actually there's some good stuff on it. Apple TV. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it goes under the radar a little bit. People forget about it. But I saw there's a great documentary by Werner Herzog called Fireball, Visitors from a Dark World about you know, meteorites hitting the Earth. And anything he does is interesting just because of his delivery. And, and oh, God, I'd, listen to, I'd listen to him narrate yeah. anything. Exactly, yeah. And there's a brilliant bit where he goes to Chicxulub, which is where the asteroid hit 65 million years ago to wipe out the dinosaurs. And he just describes it as this godforsaken town. <laughs> <laughs> Not to, and it is a dump. You may not, you never want to go there. <laughs> Have you um, seen that? He did a documentary, he narrated a documentary in Antarctica. And there's this weird thing where they, there's every now and again a penguin is born where its its brain chemistry is wrong and it migrates in the wrong direction, and Herzog it doesn't go, last long. <laughs> well, no, it doesn't. But Herzog's n- narration of this this bird hurtling off in the wrong direction towards mountains is just the single bleakest thing in, <laughs> in the, the humanities. But I mean, I would pay good money for him to do um, Master Chef. That would be mag- <laughs> just be that would that would be amazing when he turns up in the Mandalorian. Going, yeah, yeah. We, I, hunting is a complicated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the only problem is when he when he turns up in films, it unfortunately does rather break with the suspension disbelief because it's like it's Werner Herzog being yeah. Werner Herzog. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it was brilliant when he turned up as the villain in um, in it was Jack Reacher. Jack Reacher, like, yeah. Werner yeah. Herzog, fantastic. Again, he was just Werner Herzog yeah, with, less totally, fi- with, yeah. with less fingers. Why do they less always fingers. choose the bullet? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the Beastie Boys was great. Thanks. Good. It's, it's really good. That's Spike Jones, isn't it? Who did that? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so Spike Jones, and I really like the fact that it's done on stage and. They talk you through the whole career, and I was blubbing at the end. And, and some never... of their less PC decisions. <laughs> yes, but it, it it's really interesting to listen to them because they're, they're our age group um, now. Yeah. And one of and them's it's, dead. Yeah, and one of them sadly passed away. Spoilers. And it's um, it's interesting hearing them from from this point of view, their point of view now, looking back, looking back on and reflecting doing, yeah. on stuff because they they were really quite nasty to to some of the original members of the band and so on and and at the time to say sorry and that kind of thing so it was really really good and the music was excellent the atmos mix was all's boutique is still picture quality one of the greatest on albums of the 1980s really yeah absolutely and for like a bit of supporting material this the um the the inspiration for spike chance to make it which is a beastie boys book um which is their autobiography written by the remaining um members uh, is just so good such a, yeah. a good coffee table book and just a really interesting read yeah no th- this week i've gone back to listen to l communications i hadn't heard that in oh must be over a decade since i last listened to that so i've been back listening to a lot of the back catalog uh, this last week uh, so yeah highly recommend that if you haven't seen it apple tv not a lot on there but i think i'll get through that quite quickly actually <clears throat> looks like there's some quality stuff there and it's and included the picture in the and sound quality is really good on apple tv yeah as well. yeah they really up, up yeah. the um sorry apple tv plus to differentiate yeah. it from the apple tv yeah. device yeah. but they they have a very high um bit rate on their stuff yeah yeah no, I'd, I'd, I'd be spending mankind. quite a bit of or, or start with for all mankind or c Okay. No, don't bother with C. For all mankind. Yeah, F- Phil might write like C. It's silly. It is Everyone's silly. Blind. It's fun- <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. It's ridiculous. Jason Momoa okay. action. My man. <laughs> what's, right. what's the Tom Hanks thing? I was going to watch that. Oh, uh, Greyhound. Greyhound. That's, Greyhound. Yeah, that's really yeah. worth. That's worth definitely yeah. worth watching. Yeah. I think I'll Enjoy watch that. that. Uh, other things I've been doing. Not a lot. Um, projectors going back this week. I've had. I had it, it's the first time I've had to arrange collection. For, for something <laughs> so I've had fun I was sitting for a, almost an hour on hold uh, this morning um, waiting to uh, get that arranged but the projector's there in the flight case it's going back why uh, do you have to arrange it? 
Um, it was just through TNT. So obviously Sony arranged it, but they called me. I missed the call. So I had to call TNT. Oh, yeah, it's a nightmare. Oh, yeah, no. what a nightmare. Let them, let them call you back. <laughs> I did in the end. I just got back onto the uh, Sony and they said... Got, they got hold of me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Go on. I just said, yeah, can you get them to phone me back? I'm not sitting on hold for an hour again. So. Yeah, well, exactly. No, they called yeah. me and I was like, I was in the middle of breakfast. And I'm like, what? Who is this? What do you want? <laughs> and it was like, all oh, right. And it goes, and they start again, you got a pen? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and then it's just the three information. I didn't write any of it down. I was like, just make sure you're there on the day <laughs> or they'll be held to pay. All right, bye. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, so, I'm glad that you remain as professional as ever. Since. So I, uh, I'm finishing on Friday. I'm not finishing, but I, I won't be reviewing anything or doing any major work. I'll be publishing stuff and looking after the site, obviously, over Christmas and holidays. But I am having time off. I'm going to sit and watch movies. I'm going to sit and catch up on everything I've missed, including TV and all the rest of it. So that's what I, because I'm not going anywhere for Christmas. I will be here on my own. Well, you are welcome. Violent you're welcome guns. to uh, no. You're welcome to, uh, to 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 ring in if you want to just uh, <laughs> can, to join in the three way argument talk, talk about to, music. Talk to two drunks. I can two drunks up. about albums. Yeah. <laughs> so uh... Steve will come by for the mince pie. <laughs> yeah. Phil will come by. So, so, uh, so yeah. I mean, that's my decision. I, I just I I didn't want to take the risk going up to Scotland, and I don't think a uh, little wee Jimmy Cranky would let me over the border anyway. It's going to all get out locked down. So. So yeah, that's what I'm planning on doing. I'm planning on catching up on all the films and all the TV uh, that I've missed. So that's what I've been doing this week. Right, so we're all up to date on what we've been doing. Uh, Kaz, you've got four minutes. Current competitions. Okay, well, we might as well go out big. So we've got almost two dozen competitions live. You can win a Philips 55-inch OLED 935 worth. Now, come on, that now, is come a on, prize. That is a Christmas prize to win that. £2,000. That is a pretty good Christmas prize. But it's not drawing before Christmas, so... So if you do promise to someone else as a Christmas present, you need to be supremely yeah, confident. Yeah, just, just to let <laughs> you know. I'll, I'll tell you what, it's one of the best TVs I've seen this year. Yeah. Without doubt, so that is a big, good prize to win that. You can win another Denon Home 250 wireless speaker. Oh, no, that, sorry, this is the same competition. Worth 449 with AV Online. And you can win another Sharp SBW800 because yeah, that is another the last one. competition. Yeah. It's a Dolby Atmos soundbar with wireless subwoofer. That's also 449. Um, that's a hell of a start to the competitions. I can't really top of that. The rest of them are discs, but there's a bunch of 4K discs, Tremors, the HMV Japanese Steelbook of Spartacus, Lion Gates, Requiem for a Dream. Uh, Arrows Cinema Paradiso and Arrows King of New York. And we've got the usual host of Blu-ray competitions, including the Criterion December Blu-ray titles. And we actually managed to get a Christmas Studio Ghibli bundle from Studio Canal, including a whopping eight titles. Four of them are the limited edition Studio Ghibli steelbooks, and the other four are the Blu-rays. Um, so head over to avforums.com competitions to enter, and all competitions are open to eligible AV Forms members resident in the UK. Okay. Uh, any exclusives this week? We've got Patreon exclusives. Um, as you mentioned earlier, they're pretty excellent prices. Uh, 30 quid Crash Limited Edition 4K set. The 45 quid Akira Limited Edition 4K set. The Limited Edition Japanese Artwork Book. Japanese Artwork Steel Book. 4K release of The Great Wall. BBC's Roadkill on Blu-ray. And Better Call Saul season five on blu-ray we've also got a podcast exclusive which is to win a copy of we are who we are on blu-ray stay tuned for details on how to win that and just to let you in i accidentally revealed the question it was very interesting to see i not only noticed because i was going to read the um how many people had got it wrong and i noticed that like 100 percent of people only 10 people had en entered had got it right and since i changed it to you have to listen to the podcast to, to answer the question everyone's got it wrong so people, as people are still entering it and getting it wrong, but um, uh, we'll be drawing a number of these competitions on Christmas Day. So I'm hoping to notify a whole host of you on Christmas Day that you've won something juicy. That's incredibly dedicated. No, that's that's good. Good for you, Kaz. Uh, I mean, I, I, I won't lie. I won't lie. I do when I, in my technical support stuff. I do. End, I answer one question on Christmas Day just to mess with somebody's head. 
<laughs> it would be pretty cool. I mean, I think I think there are about six competitions closing. I, I figured run them on cri- till Christmas Day, and yeah. it'd be a nice yeah. surprise for some of them. Yeah. Well, thanks for doing that, Kaz, and also uh, thank you for organising all the competitions this year. Yeah. yeah. And good work. Uh, we've always got loads to read out, so thanks very much for your work there. In fact, why don't we do something special now? We've got quite a few people watching us. They watch us every week. Um, they turn up every week. Um, watch us live on YouTube and they ask questions and they use a chat window and so on. So have you got any spare discs lying around, Kaz? As you happen to mention it, <laughs> I've got a Blu-ray of Ghostbusters 1 and 2 sealed here. Right, okay. Um, so competition, if you are listening live right now, sorry if you're listening later in the week, um, you need to listen live. We're rewarding the people who do join us every week. What's the question, Kaz? And uh, the first one to type it into the chat window wins. So what's the Ooh, question? Exciting. Oh, okay. Um, let's go with, we'll go with easy. What's Steve's background? What, his not, life back- not his life background. <laughs> his <crime> background <laughs> on, the, on the image, on the podcast. He uses it every week or most weeks. <laughs> I thought the answer was, yeah, banker. 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 <laughs> banker. right wins. That is the correct answer. If I you're, think... I suppose if we're happy with that slightly curious uh, <laughs> calibre. I, I think Greg Cartwright gets it. I no, mean, yeah, I, I, think, I, oh, wow. I can't okay. argue okay. with we'll that. Get, we'll yeah. do that, sure. He's clearly okay. been listening for years if he knows that. <laughs> Sure, that, that well, actually got around the bit of trivia thing as well. Well, I, actually, Mr. Mr. H gets it, you know, former Hong Kong, well, the number of times you mentioned, oh, I used to live in Hong Kong, and I used to live in Japan and all that stuff. Uh, no, 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 I, I, if I you're think, doing uh, this in pure chronology, it, Steve is or was a banker. A banker. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When you say, yeah. what's my background, my first thought was banker. So I think Graham Cartwright. I, I, I thought it was Millennium Falcon. I thought he was well, talking that, we were thinking. Well, no, the I idea think that's was what Kaz meant, but I was, <laughs> I was. That's not what I was thinking when he asked the question. So no. So anyway, thank you very much, everybody that joins us live uh, for the podcast every week. Um, we've only been doing it since May. God, it's been that long. Um, so thank you very much for joining us every week. Um, it's it's been quite a transition from. Basically, it used to be a two-hour session on a Sunday night where the majority of it got cut out, basically. <laughs> Left on the cutting room floor. <laughs> Three um, hours of recording for a tight 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it, used to be, it used to be a lot of work in editing it and so on. So making the transition where we're trying very hard not to uh, where? You know, get, get, get AV forums into trouble and sue. Uh, it would have been easier. Just, just so you know, it, it would have been has, easier. Phil has kept everything. I know he's kept everything. Yeah. It's, it's just pure bribery material, you know, blackmail material yeah. rather. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got one photograph of Steve with, Steve with a, a blow up um, sheet. Oh, a photograph? You've got full on footage. Uh, yeah, actually. It's video. A sheet. Yeah, actually. Going, yeah. going for it full method. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt sorry for my poor friend who had to film it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he, I don't think he's ever really recovered from that. Even. Yeah, scarred for life, I think. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, so, Graham Cartwright, um, there'll be a message pop up from Stuart. Oh, in fact, he's done it already. Yeah, so, um, look, look how fast. Yeah, send me a PM. Uh, yeah, yeah, send send Kaz a PM, and he'll sort that. Congratulations, Graham. Congratulations. You were very fast, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's scary that people know our backgrounds as well and can answer questions as quickly as that. But anyway, thank you very much um, for everybody entering the competitions as well. And that's going to wrap things up there. And we'll be back in a sec with hardware. Uh, got way ahead of myself there because of all the excitement um, giving away something live. We forgot to do previous competition winners. Yeah. Very quickly, Kaz, sure. uh, who are the previous competition winners? Mark A won the Sharp SBW800, the last Dolby Atmos soundbar with wireless subwoofer we gave away. We're 499, so congratulations. That's got to be one of the best competition prizes of the year. Uh, cool Neo won a copy of Evil Dead on 4K and Hyung Seong won a copy of Westworld Season 3 on 4K. Apologies if I pronounced that wrong. Oh, I think you were actually spot on with that pronunciation. No, yeah, I think you got that right. So uh, <laughs> congratulations to the winners. Right, so we're, we're not going to take too long on this section. Uh, no, because we've just spent the last month doing we have, we've been, the award winners. <laughs> so, so rather than best products of the year and all the rest of it, I think we should do this as, because we see so much in terms of review equipment, 
it can become a bit of a chore. And I know there's a lot of you out there going to say, yeah, 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 but you've got my dream job doing what you do. And yes, we appreciate that. Me and Steve say on a regular basis to each other, we could be doing... <laughs> We could be doing far worse jobs than what we actually. Oh yeah, it's not like we're digging coal or anything. Exactly. Like that, is it? No offense yeah. to coal miners out there, but that no, does look like no. hard work. Yeah. So. Um, and I've never done a day's work in my life. I know that, Steve. <laughs> That's well documented. Uh, <laughs> but yes. Uh, but was I going with this? Yeah. So rather than just I picking. I don't know out, where you're going with it. I was kind of curious myself on that one. <laughs> rather, rather than just the best products of the year, we see so much stuff that that now and again a product will come along. And maybe it's not, you know, the best of the best, but it opens our eyes to the possibilities of what could be coming along the road. Um, or it's a really good product in terms of price against the performance and so on. Um, so rather than doing our best of products, because you've, you've had our editor's choice, there's two or three products that have really stood out for me this year. So I'll go first and then you'll get a gist of where I'm, I'm going with this. The first product for me is the NAD T778. It is... One of those products that just comes along and blows you away and you think, wow, yes, it's two and a half thousand pounds, but I've got to say technology on board, the TFT at, at the front, the, the color monitor, we haven't seen that very often. It's, a, I think, neither the first manufacturer to really uh, bring it into the mainstream and it works incredibly well. Um, but the thing for me was the sound quality as well. The sound quality was absolutely fantastic. It's digital um, amplification. Um, and when I hooked it up to the uh, MKs that I run, so I run MK, um, MP300s at the front, uh, 300 surrounds, 300 Ts, a um, couple of uh, MK subs. I know these speakers so well. I know the room so well. I've been using the room for nearly 20 years now in terms of reviewing kit and so on. Um, but that added with Dirac uh, live, and just the sound quality. And this was just the amps in the, the 778. I wasn't using external amplification at, at all. It blew me away. It really did. It, it, it made me sit back and think, blame me, this is a really, really good product. So that's kind of where I'm coming from in terms of what, what, what I think our best product should be. The other one for me is the Panasonic um, HZ2000. The GZ2000 was an absolutely cracking uh, TV. The reason it stands out for me, um, the HZ, they've, they've, they've solved some of the problems from last year, which was posterization on uh, really quite bright sections um, of the image, especially HDR images around, uh, like if there's a sun in the scene or something like that, or a bright source of light, you've got some posterization to fix that. And it's the fact that Pi Panasonic's engineers have actually taken the panel from LG display and done something different with it. So most of these TVs, they have different processing on the back of them. Uh, manufacturers own chip, you know, Philips is a good example of that. They do some really good work with their P5 chip and so on. But Panasonic have actually taken the panel and added stuff to the rear of the panel, like heat dissipation, uh, heat sink on the back. Um, so they can go brighter, they can dissipate the heat. That combats image retention as well. And the fact that they discovered some issues with black posterization, um, you know, black flickering that um, does uh, turn up on LG displays and Sony displays and so on. Panasonic noticed it quite early on and managed to find a way around that issue. So, you know, just above black is absolutely amazing um, on the HZ2000. It's a, an expensive TV, but if you understand the engineering behind it, um, and and how it's obtaining its, its picture quality, it's worth every penny. So for me, those are the two products this year that have blown me away. And I just thought, yeah, um, absolutely brilliant. I mean, obviously we saw, we did see some stuff at CES. It's been an odd year because normally we'd see some of that stuff hitting the market like uh, micro LED. Um, we saw a, a possible consumer product way back in January, yet I think uh, things kind of pushed that to the sidelines um, and we might get to see that uh, next month actually um, we might get to see an, an iteration who knows uh, only we only know once CES hits but yeah for me those are the two big products um, that really made me sit and go wow absolutely brilliant so what about you Ed hi-fi wise uh, I've got two uh, diametrically op opposed ends of the uh, pricing structure the first one, one of the most expensive products I looked at last year, but not the most expensive. Uh, the Kudos Titan 505. Um, I have 
very strong feelings about the fact that we tend to over speaker our rooms um uh, and this two two-way stand mount one six and a half inch driver one tweeter you can buy speakers that cost a fraction of this that have the same size driver complement but they just work brilliantly in in the in in terms of the average uk lounge they can do things that are simply astounding and what they are the combination of being able to do extraordinary detail retrieval they you know at times they're positively forensic but the sheer joy that you get at the same time from them is is truly extraordinary they are um one of those products where you sort of have this horrible feeling that sooner or later you're going to you know sell part of your renal system and just find a way to have them because they just deliver an incredible combination of joy and phenomenal accuracy then just to you know demonstrate that it's not all about you know multi-thousand pound elitism the other product which just had me grinning from ear to ear is the Rega io because it's is a 380 pound amplifier it sits on a piece of a4 paper um and yeah it's not the most heavily featured or specified device going but in terms again of just delivering the actual musical worth of what you're listening to and it really doesn't matter what you are listening to i i put it through an a, a really bizarre program of stuff uh in the time it was here and uh, Rager has been kind enough. It, it remains here because one, it's our product of the year. It's our affordable amplifier award winner. Uh, so it's going to be find itself uh, trying to uh, compete against uh, other products that turn up through 2021 and to be used as a, a test point with more affordable products as well. It's, it's doing that uh, in, in the system in front of me at the moment. Um, and every time I use it, I am reminded at just how staggeringly good it is. I'm not going to pretend um, in, you know, these are, these are tight times for a lot of people. Um, I'm one of them. Um, uh, 380 pounds is still going to be a lot of money to, to a lot of people, but nevertheless, you are getting a product which is beautifully made, exceptionally capable, and it just makes me grin from ear to ear uh, whenever I use it. I, 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 there have been times uh, in the last couple of days using it as a piece of test equipment where it, I've just sat there listening to a system which is under a thousand pounds all in and I have been just staggered at how good it yeah. is. You, you know it's a good product when you want to go back and listen to albums that, or, or music or mm -hmm. film clips that you, you use all the time but you you actually want to do it because you think well this product's actually doing something you know, yeah. different, something a bit better and so on. Um, if you've had a product like that you, that you've purchased this year or anything you want us to uh, to know about in terms of uh, what you think in terms of uh, the best of the year, then obviously stick it into the uh, into the chat window there. I mean, Craig Sowerby. Good to see you, Craig. Craig's an old friend of mine. He used to work um, Seven Oaks when Seven Oaks was in Newcastle. He now works for uh, PMC. Um, thanks for joining us. So a lot of you back in the day. <laughs> What's that? He saw, a lot, saw a lot of you back in the day. <laughs> yes, I was a regular in the store, uh, regular demo. Um, although I did buy quite a bit of stuff as well. So, you know, I, may, I maybe went in six or seven times and not buy anything, but then I'd go in and blow a bit of cash. So uh, that was the way to do it back then. But, yeah. um, but he says uh, Regamp is a bargain. Yeah, I think Ed, Ed will agree with you. On, Absolutely. On um, if you are, you know, it, it should. If you are looking to build an affordable separate system, it should be the core. There's no question about that at the moment. So yeah, I've I've a, a, an absolute masterpiece, and it, the reason it was the product of the year um, is because of that genuine suspension of disbelief at how good it is relative to how much it costs. Yep, good stuff. Right, Steve, what products have really jumped out for you this year? Well, one of them isn't necessarily a new product this year, but it remains uh, the current product, and it and I love it. It's probably the my favourite thing in terms of what I've bought in the last few years myself with my own money. Um, and that's my JVC N7 projector. Uh, obviously, it's had another major firmware update this year, so I'm delighted that JVC has continued its strategy of, of sticking with the same model, but just adding new features via firmware updates that are free. And they've done it twice now since it's released. And it's um, it's pain for them because these things never yeah, stay in stock. Can't buy them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I mean, we were talking about the J the Sony projectors last week. I mean, I, I had the twelve thousand pound VW790, perfectly good projector. 
But going back to the N7, uh, I just think it's superior. I've, uh, I've got, I think I've got the to picture... say the, the N5 as well, Steve. The I went back. I went back to the N5 this week, and it's just the way it does HDR. It's it's, you know, yeah. it's absolutely spot on. Watching the Lord of the Rings. I mean, and there's something else. Ed, I'm sorry, um, Phil. I don't know if you've noticed this, but I've. I, it's something. It, it, I think subconsciously I'd been aware of this, but it, it suddenly became because I happened to be testing a disc uh, for another review for someone else, but. I watched it uh, originally on the, um, it was the New Mutants, not a great film, I have to say, but uh, I watched the disc originally on the Sony and then rewatched parts of it again um, because I made notes of specific scenes. I wanted to compare them when I put the N7 back up, rewatched them again on the N7 and I watched it uh, with the commentary track on the OLED, on the LG uh, C9, 77 C9. And what I became aware of was that I think I prefer the N7 picture even compared to the OLED because when you project an image, particularly a film, I think it just looks amazing because that's how it was meant to be seen. And same with the Lord of the Rings discs, that they just look incredible projected onto a big screen. And and that projector delivers in every way, particularly yeah, yeah. if you say fill with HDR. And I and I sometimes forget it. And I haven't seen it for a bit. And I'll put I'll put something on it. And every time I watch something, I've watched Mad Max. That's a 1979 low budget Aussie <laughs> exploitation flick, and that looked amazing. Yeah, well, it's I mean, just I, incredible what it can do. I, I set the N5 back up uh, last night or the night before because obviously I'd finished with the Sony, packed it all up, and I watched um, Star Tears uh, uh, Discovery. On, uh, on Netflix, and um, it, it was obviously just Netflix, but there was a lot of close-up shots in this episode this week and a lot of um, nice work with the camera, obviously crying. shot and shot, shot and scope. In fact, there, was, there wasn't as much no, crying as we expected. There wasn't any crying this week. I, know I think that. it was the first episode we've had this season where there wasn't any crying. But there was a lot of facials, especially of um, uh, the main Michelle characters. Yeo. And so on. Michelle, Michelle Yeo, Yeo and so on. And the detail, and, the, and, and it just yep. looked cinematic. It really looked fantastic. And I agree with you, a projected image, a reflected image, um, rather than a direct view image, there's just something cinematic about it. And I think when you watch stuff like The Lord of the Rings, which is designed to be projected at you know 50 feet, 60 feet wide in a, in a cinema, it just there's something about it. It just looks absolutely um, amazing. Yeah, it, bl it blows me away every time. So that's got to be my favourite thing now. But that, I appreciate that wasn't actually released this year. But every time I use that projector, I think, oh, God, this looks good. So if you're in the in the market for a projector and you've got that kind of budget, so six and a half, I think it is for the N7, eight and a half for the, um, um, sorry, six and a half for the N5, eight and a half for the N7, then um, those are what you should be looking at. To be honest, opinion. it's just really, it's just magnificent and, and slightly reassuring to watch to just see, so you know, uh, uh, an AV product with some legs. It is yeah. dev uh, it's I mean, okay, it's not. It's not. Uh, a, let's not pretend it's a bargain end of the market. But it, it's still, yeah. it's still a, a demonstration to other manufacturers that yeah, there is scope to actually keep it in the field and and you know avoid the the depreciation and and sheer depression that comes from something which is supportive at 12 months and then just yeah, joins I mean, the ranks of the forum it's working for them like i said you know yeah. we just said there i mean they can't keep the these two models in stock um yeah, they're they can't flying keep them out they're making them yeah. as fast as they can sell them as fast as yeah. they can make them and um I think it's a strategy has worked for them and I hope they continue to do it. I mean, having once again, I'm not trying to diss Sony here, but if you look at the 790 compared to the 760, there's not a lot in it um, in terms of features of what they are essentially the same projector with some minor processing differences. So, you know, um, I'm sure a lot of 760 owners would have been delighted if they'd had an, a firmware update instead. Uh, so congratulations to JVC. I'm, I'm delighted. I think it's a, a, an amazing product. And the fact that they kept it up to date with major firmware updates for free for the last two years is, is another feather in their cap. So that's yeah. great. If you don't have that kind of budget, um, and most people probably don't, and say you're in the sub 4,000, sub 3,000 pound um, price bracket for a projector, uh, my recommendation, hands down, Epson. is the Epson TW9400, which is a superb projector for that money. Superb. And it's got a full feature spec. Actually, it's got features you won't get on the £5,000 entry-level Sony yeah. 4K projector. Now, that is native 4K, and obviously the Epson isn't. But, I mean, it's got lens memory features that actually work. Um, it's got a lens memorized lens cover. It's uh, it's a cracking projector. Uh, and for, I think it's 2400 at the moment, something like that. 
uh, absolute bargain for that. Yeah. So if that's what, if you're looking for a projector and you can't afford the JVCs, get the Epson. While we're talking being about, asked what screens. Yeah, yeah, I was just coming on this, Ed. So while we're talking about projectors, screen uh, materials and so on, um, this is worth taking your time with and it's worth having a good budget for your screen. Um, the projectors that we're talking about, the N5, the N7 and the Epson, they need to be used in a light controlled room. Uh, it's no good sticking them in the room with white walls, white ceilings and light colored furniture and all the rest of it because all that's going to happen there is the light when it hits the screen is going to bounce off the ceilings and the walls and reflect back onto the screen and completely blow out your image. So you need to... You can get away with it with the Epson at that price point. I don't think anyone's assuming it's going to be in a dedicated room necessarily, although you've got the best out of it no. if you do. But with the JVCs, no. if you don't put them in a black room, you are wasting your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. And there's ways you can do it. You don't have to paint your room black. There are... Uh, different shades of greys and, and other colours that when the light is taken out of the room, um, you, they're not as reflective and the room actually darkens up quite a bit. So grey is a popular colour at the minute in terms of interior design and it's a good colour to use because obviously it's part of the grayscale. Um, you can, but, uh, I was kind of sorry, going to say, if up. you want to improve your projected image, um, a tin of paint is the cheapest and yep, easiest absolutely. way of doing it. <laughs> absolutely. So, so what I've done with my screen wall is I use a black felt material on the screen wall um, just so it absorbs any light that doesn't hit the screen and then not the velour. side walls. No, no, it's not the law. It's, it's just what I do. And no, oh, sorry, it, not the law. I mean, that would have been, been yellow, you, much more uh, sensual. Is that Brannigan style? <laughs> All right, it's the law. Sorry. <laughs> the law. I thought the you were law. saying, is that the law? <laughs> um and the side walls, I, I've actually, I use a purple color in my cinema room. So, and when you switch the lights off, it just goes completely pitch black. And Richard like, Sims just made a good point. It was a friend of mine's about to do in his home cinema, which is dark black curtains on a rail. So yeah. Yeah. Well, if, if you, if you uh, follow Dave, AV forums back in the day, um, Stuart's first cinema was uh, curtains on the walls, wasn't it Stuart? So, um, and that's a, that's a great way of doing things. But the only thing is you need to be aware of, um, sound reflections you don't want to do it completely around the whole room because you want uh, some some sound reflections especially in the back of the room where you have your surrounds and so on uh, you want a bit the walls to be a bit lively at the rear you want to dampen them down at the front but anyway getting back on the screen so once your your room's sorted it's worth at least 10 percent, 15 percent of your budget at least on a screen i use a screen excellence it's a 10 foot scope screen and it's got a slight curve um, that's I, I wasn't jumping on the bandwagon back in the day when all the TVs were carved. Um, the reason you have a carved projection screen is that normally a projector um, is brighter in the middle and darker towards the edges. And if you've got a, a carved screen... Um, so if you're using then, an anamorphic lens with that yeah, projector, which was the case... Which, the I, which I was using back in the day. You were, weren't you? Yeah, you yeah. were using one then. Yeah. Um, obviously, the carve, it means that the light hits the, the side of the screen at the same time as the light in the centre, and it means it evens out the brightness. Um, and it's a 0 0.9 gain that I use. Steve, you were using a Carada screen, but you changed it. I, uh, I was using a Carada. I unfortunately got out of business years ago now. Um, I updated my screen this year. Uh, I did talk about it at length in the summer. But uh, I bought a Seymour, Seymour screens. Um, I bought their um, Centre Stage XD, I think it's called, which is their um, acoustically transparent material. It's got a gain of 0.98. So basically it's got a gain of one. It's a unity, unity yeah. gain screen, which is very high for an acoustically transparent screen. Um, if you get up close, you can see the weave, but once you go a few feet back, you can't see the weave at all. Uh, I, I bought it for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to bring the Project the projection screen down because the Carada was above where I previously had had floor standards, so it was too high. Um, so I wanted to bring it down, but that meant I needed a acoustic transparent screen so I could put speakers behind it. Um, so I, I, I bought that. I, I did some research and decided to go with the Seymour. I'm absolutely delighted with it. If you're looking for a screen, I can't recommend them highly enough. I think that um, the, the, the acoustic transparency works brilliantly. As I said, it's got a gain of almost one, which is very high for a unity, for a acoustic transparent screen. I've got the scope ratio screen. Uh, it comes, I, well, you don't have to get it, but I ordered that. And also it comes with um, magnetically attached side masking. So it's like a cheap version of doing side masking. They're designed you know, to fit on with magnets. So you just attach it and you've got black velvet side masking. Um, so when you're watching 1.78 or 1.85 to one movies, um, there's side masking and it makes a massive difference. It makes, it so makes a huge difference. With yeah. that. Delighted with that. So this, as, as I say, it's, they're, they're not overly, overly expensive. I think the whole thing, including importing it, cost me about two and a half grand. And that's for a 10 foot, a three meter wide 
scope ratio screen with side masking. And I have to say, uh, crucially transparent and everything, I think that's actually pretty good value. Uh, and I have been absolutely delighted with it since I've installed it. Obviously yeah. having it lower down makes a big difference. Having it um, crucially transparent makes a difference because the speakers are coming from behind, or sounds coming from behind the screen. Uh, and the projected image it, it delivers is superb. So um, yeah. I can recommend them highly. Yeah. No, it, it makes a, a big difference, uh, you know, specking your, your screen properly and, and doing the room as well, making sure that you use the, the right materials for light reflection and all the rest of it. So we've gone a little bit off a tangent there. Did you have another product or was it just the JVC you were going to you were going to talk about? Mentioned the Epson. And I was going to mention, um, again, not cheap, but uh, I, I'm delighted with the performance of the uh, of the Lindorf MP60 and Room Perfect in particular, and the way it de delivers a really cohesive, tight soundstage yeah. and, and some really nice bass. So that's been a, an absolute joy to use. Uh, a bit cheaper, I will say two other products. One is the Manhattan TR3 PVR. If you like me and you still like a PVR in your house, uh, this is a cracking little product, uh, competitively priced, you can get a couple hundred quid. Uh, nice, slick, intuitive, really effective uh, um, user interface. Does everything you want a PVR to do. Uh, I just recently re reviewed the uh, Humax Aura, their new PVR, and the reviews in, and ready to go It'll go up sometime over Christmas. But that um, that product uses in, involves incorporating Android TV, and it's very sophisticated. But you know what? I preferred the Manhattan because it just it just gets the job done. <laughs> I didn't really want all the other bells and whistles. So if you're looking for a nice, simple, gets the job done PVR, and also I'm pleased that Manhattan have delivered all the firmware updates they promised, adding new features. So they've, they've kept the promise in terms of that. It's a cracking little product. And if you want to Im improve the performance of your TV for 50 to 80 quid, get yourself a media light, bias light. <laughs> Yeah, bias light makes a big difference. Uh, Condo 007, um, are the short throw projectors recommended? Um, can you be a little bit more specific? Because there's, there's uh, do you mean ultra <laughs> short throw projector, i.e. one that goes right up against the screen, or do you mean short throw as in um, like a DLP with a short throw lens on it? Um, try and be a little bit more specific, and we'll try and give you an answer on that one. Yes, yes, there's to say anything. I've asked you two different things. <laughs> <laughs> so hang on is it ultra short throw if you just write out up close yeah okay ultra short throw steve you've looked at a few of them which ones would you recommend if, there uh well uh, if you again it depends on your budget um the the two i've seen have both been quite pricey um like five and six grand uh i did i did think that the samsung is, is actually a really impressive product um th three three uh three lasers so red green blue laser uh very bright massive color space um it's a dlp chipset so not native 4k but you wouldn't what was know the, the model number on that one steve that was the uh lsp 9t uh, right. really catchy <laughs> it's like rolls the, actually they, they, they prefer you call it the premiere which i think is a bit more catchy <laughs> of course. than the lsp 9t yeah the premiere but it, that's a great project but it isn't cheap uh, but it's got the full tires and smart platform built into it it's got really good soundbar built into the front of it so the audio is actually really good from this projector uh very unusual uh and um it delivers a big um i mean it's i think it's 100 130 inches so if you want a big image and you haven't got a lot of space or you want something you could actually use as an alternative to a TV, although bear in mind that obviously um, a TV is going to be a lot better in terms of HDR because they're just inherently brighter. But also um, if there's ambient light in the room, you know, no matter how bright a projector is, that's not, it's going to mess up the image a little bit because as you were saying, Phil, a minute ago, darker the room, the better the contrast performance. And this, and this projector, I mean, I used it both in a room with white walls and in, a, and in the home cinema. And in the home cinema, it does deliver a really nice picture. So um, it's worth, you know, darkening the room a bit if you want to get the best out of it. But that's a great product. Um, but as I say, it's not cheap, but it delivers everything you could want from a short throw, ultra short throw laser projector uh, with a full smart platform. Yep. Good stuff. So those are uh, our products that really stood out this year. Stuff that is a little bit different um, and not necessarily, uh, you know, the... Uh, the badge winners, as it were, that, that uh, you would expect. So hopefully we've given you some ideas of stuff that's, because we tend to see a lot of stuff and sometimes you just get a bit, you know, it, it just becomes a, a normality. So when a product stands out, it's uh, it's interesting. Right, before we go on, uh, CES time is when we come back. Um, so we'll be coming back on the 12th of January for CES. CES kicks off on the 11th. There are going to be some products um announcements before uh, CES kicks off. So the week before, I know that Panasonic are having an event, Denon are having an event. I don't know whether that's going to be under NDA. We'll find that out 
uh, when we get to those. Um, I, I know that Panasonic probably will because I'm getting an early look on that one. Um, so that probably will be. But by the time we come to you on the 12th, those NDAs should be lifted um, and we should have products to talk about because the press conferences are on the 11th. Um, so you will have the, uh, the major um, brands launching everything on the 11th. We'll be back on the 12th and then the podcast is back to normal. On the 20th, I'm going to be uh, quick here because we were going to talk quite a bit about CES, but we're not going to bother now. We're going to move on because we need uh, other things to talk about. Uh, before we do, Fag B has given a donation. Steve, do you want to read that one out? Uh, thanks for the respite this year. Steve or Phil, do you know which RGB high or low is 16 to 235 on an Apple TV 4K? I'll be honest, I didn't even know there was an RGB high low option because I just use 444. Yeah, that's normal. I pick four four four, and um, I set it to content match. So set set it to SDR. Don't do four K HDR because if you do four K no. HDR, everything is in HDR. Um, you don't want that. So set it to four K SDR, and then switch content match on content matching and, and contrast and matching, frame rate. Frame rate. Frame matching. Ma- sorry, frame matching and contrast matching. Yeah. You switch them on, and it should automatically do it. Um, and obviously four four four. Um, yeah, you, I don't, you I don't think four, there's a set. Four, four. Two two, I think, are the two options. It depends on what you've got, but yeah, output at four K SDR, four 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 for the Chroma upsampling, and um, that should be. Yeah, that I wasn't be, aware there was a sixteen to two three five yeah, set. No, there was either. Yeah, <laughs> never used it. Um, don't need to. <laughs> Our technical experts, yeah. there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, well, never needed to use it. So that helps, Fergie right. B. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hopefully that does help. Right, and thanks for your donation as well. You donated five pounds there. Thank you very much. Thank and we'll you. be back in a sec with some software. Right, so welcome back. We're going to do software, and in, you know we're not going to do uh, specifics like we normally do every week. It's a Christmas special, if you didn't already know. Uh, and we're going to talk about our favourite movies and games and all the rest of it. Uh, before we do that, we have to do the boring stuff. So, Ed, um, album and vinyl of the year, please. Right, okay, album. I'm really <laughs> glad that Tom's turned back up for this because I've owned an art about this, did some thinking, and um, it's Folklore by Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Ed, right, I am 100% with you. That is a great got, album. You've got to hear me out on this. There are other albums that I have enjoyed as much this year. No question about that. But there is no other album, and not just this year. I'm struggling to think of another time where this has happened, where my appraised view of an artist has changed so dramatically in the space of one album. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I know, I've known she's a great songwriter for some time, so on and so forth. It just hasn't necessarily been on my wavelength it's a magnificent album it, it it just goes to all sorts of different places um it's a tremendous listen it's beautifully recorded it, it gets the best out of both taylor swift and 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 the people who, who do things with who participate in the album as well i i just think it's a magnificent effort um, just to sorry to just to liken it to a bit of film I'm going to jump the gun a bit here, but like folklore is good. Stop me if you disagree, Ed, but folklore is good for the same reason that the Invisible Man remake at the start of this year is good in that you would not expect it to be so mature and interesting and thoughtful. And it takes you by surprise with how good it is well i mean I, with the slight caveat that i haven't seen the invisible man because it's on oh. the television um no it, it just it, as i say i just i list i i sat down to listen to it out of obligation and when i'd finished i, I listened to it again um it, it the reason it's my album of the year is because it's it you know that we should on occasion celebrate the point where you know mainstream global superstar artists do something a little bit different and and take us to different places and so on and so forth so i uh, that's my album of the year you are welcome to disagree vehemently with me and i i'm i'm absolutely fine with that and there were many other uh, music this year 2020 was a great year for music if we need to celebrate something about 2020 yeah, that so, was, so that let's was so let's find out how great it's been for music and we'll, let's go around everybody else because i'm sure no, we've all fine. got our albums of the year or stuff that we've listened to so cars what have you been listening to this year? Oh, album of free? the year. You, you have to come back to me on that one. I mean, All right, new, okay. stuff I've, new stuff I've discovered. That it's not album of the year, but something that got a lot of playing is the soundtrack to Spies in Disguise. The song tracks, not the score. 
kids absolutely love it there's some great tracks on there uh, to the point where it's a it's a film with, where the voice is done by Will Smith. I thought that at least two of the songs are sung by Will Smith. They weren't, but um, but very 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 good, very catchy, perfect for the movie. Kids loved it, and uh, yeah, that's that's had a lot of play playtime around here. Okay, Steve. Uh, I am delighted to get my hands on the Bowie live album that John and Mary danced in again, which was recorded during the latter half of the Diamond Dog Store when it had morphed into the Philly Dog Soul Tour. Uh, no one, up, up until this year, no one thought there was a recording of that last, last leg of the tour when he was doing a full show, soul review with Luther Vandross and the band and everything uh, and did lots of songs for young Americans. But they found some tapes and that was a delight. Plus, I also really enjoyed the uh, the Iggy Pop box set, day, the Bowie years, which is um, his albums, um, The Idiot and Lust for Life, plus uh, TVI and some unreleased stuff and a bunch of live recordings um, from his 1970 work with David Bowie. Bowie, when he was just a, a colossus, he managed to do four brilliant albums in one year. Uh, and that's a great box set. And oh, they're really good albums too. Okay, good stuff. Mark? Um, Run the Jewels, uh, RTJ4. Yeah. I think... In the kind of run up to Cyberpunk 2077's release, um, they were doing the soundtrack for it, and it, so obviously they got kind of, you know, a lot of uh, interest then. But also around the time of uh, the Black Lives Matter protests and things like that, and it just feels a very kind of 2020 album. You know, it's 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 it, when you go back and you listen to kind of protest songs from the 60s, it, it's very easy to see them as sanitized and as something kind of quite quaint that we, you know, we know about, we know things are better now, but it, it felt very much like the kind of soundtrack to, to Trump's America. And it's kind of full of nihilism, but it, it's kind of, it, it's very kind of video gamey at its heart in some, some ways as well. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. They know a good hook, those boys, mm. a really good hook. Excellent. Sorry, I Tom. forgot. I did buy one new album this year. So good luck, Seeker by the Water Boys. Okay. That was really good yeah. too. Good stuff. Uh, Tom? Yeah, RTJ4 was going to be one of my picks as well because it was it was amazing. But um, it's it's been a good year for old uh, indie acts. The Strokes came back this year with a, yes. a really solid album. Not perfect, but a really solid album. Um, I mentioned in one of the earlier podcasts this year that the Young Knives had a new album called Barbarians, which was oh, just good. like an oral God. assault. Yes. Which I, the more I listened to, the more I thought, no, this is actually good. Um, <laughs> But it took me <laughs> a few listens and a few attempts. Um, but I do love that. Um, but my album of the year is probably uh, Sufjan Stevens' The Ascension, which is huge sound going back to the sort of music that he was making with the Age of Ads. So not the plinky plonky guitar and trumpet that lots of people are familiar with, with this sound from um, Illinois, but more more big electronic um, sort of cacophonous <laughs> sounds almost. But again, similar to what Mark was saying about RTJ4, it, it, it kind of encapsulates the, the cultural landscape of 2019, 2020, when it was, when it was written and recorded. And it, it's just a phenomenal record. Really, I mean, just to really put it good. into perspective, it, this year has been a goldmine for people just turning in unexpected stuff. I mean, that's, it, Eurasia turned in a cracking album halfway through I, the year. I, just, I discovered that the other day, in fact, actually. Um, it came up on Missed Hits, yeah. which was a, a playlist from Spotify. I found a load of stuff I'd missed this year and been going through albums, but that was one of them. Fantastic album. Yeah. So, I mean, if yeah, if we wanted to find a little ray of sunlight in an otherwise bleak and depressing 365 days, yeah, music music was the one. Do you want me to do me vinyl? Uh, well, I was just going to mention if oh, you want to no, get up sorry. and dance, and one that's been keeping me happy all since it came out is Kylie's Disco. I just mm. if I want if I need to feel good, that's the one I've been putting on. And a lot of the albums that have been mentioned anyway, I've been uh, uh, on my playlist as well. I've just gone into Spotify actually, and it's wiped everything. Um, oh, excellent! I was just going to go through what I've been listening to recently played, and it's all gone. So, so um, if you uh, they wanted it there, the uh, the highlights for this year from maybe for <laughs> Taylor Swift and Kylie Minogue. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Um, Get in right. What's final wise then? Right, this is a bit. Of, I'm sorry, this is an outlier because it wasn't discussed in any of the previous 
podcast because it only came out on the 4th of December. Um, I have in the past uh, mentioned my uh, adoration of the Cowboy Bebop anime series from, oh God, 20 odd years ago now. Um, the soundtrack has long been um, a bit of a uh, an elusive beast. It, it, it very rarely, um, it was very rarely available for any meaningful length of time. There were licensing issues with it and so on and so forth. And uh, if it was available, it was available exclusively on CD. Earlier this year, there was an ultra limited run on vinyl, which was as much used as a handbrake on a rowing boat because it was in America and it sold out instantly. But as of December the 4th, you can buy a two disc vinyl release of the Cowboy Bebop soundtrack, which is by Japanese jazz band The Seatbelts. And it's magnificent, utterly and unstoppably magnificent as a, as a piece of music to listen to it's on the streaming services now if you don't want to just rush in blind but i've waited 20 years to own this so uh, it was always going to be my vinyl release of the year because what what's one year when you've you've waited 20 um it's just magnificent it, it helps of course it's a fantastic pressing nice artwork with it as well i'd have preferred the original series cover but you can't have everything uh otherwise just peerless and by the standards of some of these you know high ticket releases not absurdly priced it's about 22 23 quid so um or is, no sorry it's gone up to 28 pound 68 sucks to be you um <laughs> but you know that 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 I've, as I say, I've waited a very long time for that. I have had that on heavy rotation. Um, okay, if they stuff. if they keep nothing else for the live action remake, they'd have to have the soundtrack. Oh, now you see, I heard a scurrilous rumor because the seatbelts were formed and largely as an expediency thing and have since gone their separate ways. There is talk of using the British jazz group, the Comet is coming, and I honestly. Tom, I cannot think of anything more suitable for it. If you've not listened to the comment, it's coming. It is. It sounds all of it sounds like music for a Luc Besson film that hasn't yet been written. So yeah, I'm all in for that if they actually go with it. Yeah, his films haven't been great lately, though. So it'd have to be. A good uh, one. No, it, that's why they're not using it for a Luc Besson <laughs> film. They're using it for Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> but Kaz keeps on watching them anyway. Yeah, yeah, Kaz will love them. Uh, Jason Stewart has donated three pounds. Uh, Jason, thank you very much. He says no question, just a little thanks. It is appreciated. Thank you very much, Jason. Thank you, for Jason. That. Um, right, so that's uh, music out of the way. Let's move on to games. Now, games is not something we cover on a regular basis on the podcast. Hopefully, we'll we'll change that going forward into uh, 2021. Uh, hopefully, Rick will be able to join us as well as Ian, uh, who do the games reviews. No, Tom is in his games as well, and of course, Mark. Mark's in his games. So let's go to Mark first. Then your games of the year, Mark. Um, there's only one for me that really stands out. And that was Ghost of Tsushima. Um, if you like kind of feudal Japan as a setting, if you like kind of samurai films, you've been somewhat starved over the years. You think it should translate to a really easy game, but yet seemingly no one made them. Um, and it's just it, fantastic just to kind of walk around that world, to have such a kind of rich open world to wander about. And I spent an absurd amount of time in photo mode, taking really nice pictures <laughs> and stuff like that. And it, it's such a gorgeous game. Um, did I, you play it in Kurosawa mode? No, I, I didn't, I'm afraid. Oh. I did. But, but not for the whole thing, but for a, a good few hours. Oh, I, I, I dabbled, but it looks so nice. With There are so many great shots set up around little haiku moments and sunsets and stuff like that. It felt like you couldn't play it in black and white all the time. Um, I, I still think it's it's got a few like rough edges, perhaps, but it, it kind of reminds me of... Uh, Jedi Fallen Order last year where it's you, you could pick apart little things in it it's, you know some quests are a little bit samey but it's such a solid foundation and, and it, it kind of raised this hope in me that this could be a series going on so that's I'd, I'd fully expected to come along and say that uh, Cyberpunk 2077 was my game of the year but that's kind of fallen off a cliff a little bit it's got um, some issues as I understand it's it. got issues boy oh boy does it <laughs> Mm-hmm. No, it would appear. I mean, uh, uh, it, you know, I, I don't necessarily get heavily involved in actually playing them, but the the, the feedback, you, you know, I participate in online stuff, and it does appear that Ghost of Tsushima shipped almost perfect, and they polished off the bits that they didn't feel. With and right. then they dumped a massive free extra mode 
without warning anyone. They 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 just dumped a free huge update, including co-op um, mm. play, what just for free, um, which is unheard of um, and really just sets a really good precedent, I think. So yeah, well, so it's heartening, and it does look beautiful, and it looks like you can pet animals, which is. Yeah, absolutely integral to all computer games now in 2020, as best as I understand it. So, uh, you know, that's, that's good. Yeah. Uh, Tom, what about you? Yeah, just uh, Ghost of Tsushima is probably, uh, it's one of my top two as well. Um, and when I was playing it, I, obviously the, the parallels with um, Red Dead are obvious because it's essentially a samurai version of Red Dead Redemption. But where you get past the opening act of Red Dead and go, holy crap, there's too much to do here i don't know i don't know what to do next it is too big um ghost of tsushima just like it, it just pushes you in the right direction all the time it doesn't give you loads to do it gives you just the right amount of stuff outside the main story to be interesting but not doesn't label you with hundreds of like fetch quests so um it's it's just a beautiful polished not a moment wasted and i really amazing. liked I really like the use of using the wind to take you to your next dart. So yeah, no mini map. <laughs> yeah, relying on a little mini map that you end up staring at for longer than you actually look at your character because you're just trying <laughs> to find your way across the world. Yeah. It's nice to get that sense of familiarity with the small area and feel like you're actually exploring. So when you open up a new area, you do feel like you know, kind of you're thrown in and everything you see then is new to you rather than thinking, I can already see that on the mini map. You know, I know what's coming. So yeah. yeah, really good game. Yeah, um, it's maybe my top game, but in contention for it at the moment is Hades, which is a game on Switch, um, which is a roguelike, which if you're not familiar with the term is uh, essentially y you have a series of levels to traverse. Each level has a set of bad guys. You move on to the next room, kill the bad guys, move on to the next room. They get increasingly harder until you die and then you respawn right back at the beginning again keeping some of your experience and powers um and you run it again and you get a bit further and you die and you run it again and if that's the sounds... edge of tomorrow the edge of tomorrow yeah. <laughs> if that if that sounds a bit like a feedback loop it absolutely is and it is a addictive as heck um I... see that would annoy me like hell <laughs> the 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 way that it manages to avoid being repetitive is the sheer amount of story and dialogue that is in it. I am close to a hundred runs through Hades and I don't think I've seen a single piece of repeated dialogue. I don't, I, I still have maybe a third, a half of the story revealed to me. And um, it, it's just really, it, it's built to perfection. It is built to keep you playing. You can lose absolutely hours to it. Um, and even better, it is horny as shit. So to start with, basically, everyone is indifferent towards you. But the more you play, the more you interact with people, the more people just want to jump your bones. It's And it's Do got like... know about this? <laughs> absolutely. And it's got something for everyone, right? So it's got like huge muscular guys, buxom ladies, like effeminate non-binary musicians, uh, <laughs> Gina Carano-esque stacked warrior women, floating heads, ghosts, all genders, all sexualities, whatever floats your boat, you can probably get them into bed. It is pretty And funny. if you did get excited at the floating heads, please do keep that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to uh, say, the Switch is, is building up a nice little library where, uh, to start with, everyone, it's a kid's console. It's, a, it's built up this really nice little offshoot of games that haven't hit consoles in other, you know, other consoles. But, yes, yeah, stuff like Hades and they're getting among us now. And you yeah, know, it, it's I have to be really honest. Good. I agree with you, Mark. My, my ex-wife bought my son a Switch Lite, which he normally leaves here. And I think it's seen more use with me than him. So, <laughs> yeah, so... It's awesome. The, the the back catalog of games that you can get on the Switch is um, probably second only to Game Pass now. It's it's so it's such a good system, such a good system. Okay, good stuff. Is that everything games wise, or does anybody else want to come in with anything? I'd really game? quickly shout out to Stadia because I I haven't personally 
upgraded since the PS3. So I meant to get the PS4, then I meant to get the PS4 Pro. Uh, I mean, I just haven't had time for games. So Stadia has been a nice little stopgap. It's just a c controller. You, you know, you hook it up and you play it over the internet. The graphics look great. And, uh, and I've been able to join friends who have also been in lockdown, who I haven't seen for months. You know, we can get on a Zoom chat and we can get on a level and we can go and kill some terrorists and Tom Clancy's division. And, uh, and it's kept me, kept me sane. I would also like to just, if we're doing very quick ones, it's not necessarily new, new, but uh, Kerbal Space Program, because my son is obsessed with um, space stuff. And As are most young boys. Well, no, but being able to accept, uh, access some of the mechanics, you know, you can make it as difficult or as simple as you like. Um, and yeah, I mean, being able to, I mean, we haven't mastered necessarily landing on extraterrestrial bodies, but we can sock into them with truly astonishing speed. And that satisfies him very much. So <laughs> in terms of, again, passing long, tedious lockdown days, magnificent. Not a new game, but they do keep tweaking it and adding bits and stuff like that. So yeah, very satisfying. Steve, were you going to add a game? Yeah, no, I bought Star Wars Squadrons, which I was really excited about because it's a Star Wars PSVR game. And unfortunately, it's quite disappointing. It, you know, you'd think Star Wars, PSVR, Trench Run, Hoth, Speeder Bike Chase through the Forests of Endor, you know, um, Death Star 2 Chase inside the Death Star. None of that. <laughs> just That's my Christmas same. list, Steve. You ruined this for me. <laughs> it, 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 it gets welcome. boring really quickly because uh, oh. it's kind of the same thing over and over again, uh, which is a real shame. Also, it's really difficult. You have to worry about things oh, like right, angling, hard, angling your... <laughs> no, yeah, I just want to fire around and shoot stuff. I don't have to worry about angling my deflectors and, and working on my shields and all that sort of stuff. That's like, it's like homework. Well, that's why you're Jack Porkins. Um, so. <laughs> I, I last as long as him. Um, well, he's, he's I, yeah. on the list for the new Star Wars shows, isn't he? I think so. Bloody hope so. I think I've got a Star Wars show coming out. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so I think that's all the games. Oh, can mentioned. I just do a really, really quick mention yeah, on, then. <laughs> of um, Last of Us 2? Because it came out this year, um, and I heard it referred to as probably the best sequel to The Last of Us possible, which means it's not as good as the first one, but it does mean that it, it, um, it takes the story in an interesting direction. Um, and it's probably definitely the best story in a video game this year. So it's an immersive narrative experience. And if that's what you want, then it's hard to top it. Okay, so let's move on quickly. Uh, film of the year. Uh, you're all allowed one choice. <laughs> oh, okay. That shouldn't we'll be make... too hard this year. <laughs> no, it shouldn't be too hard. There hasn't been much. I mean, it's been such a, a barren year. I don't think I've watched anything like new film wise. Yeah. I was going to say someone can take my allocation because I've seen nothing. <laughs> I was saw I saw Borat. That's, that's a, <laughs> well, there you go. Borat that's a legitimate both, choice. You can have best that. and worst film of the year. Good. Yeah, exactly. By default. <laughs> oh, silence. <laughs> well, no, who, who do you want to ask? Uh, let's. Well, it's point, pointless asking Ed, isn't it? No, no. I saw one. Okay, well, go on then, Ed. Uh, Has I, to be from this year. Yes, I know. I reasonably enjoyed <laughs> Greyhound. Um, it, you know, it. Do you know what? I enjoyed watching a tight ninety-minute film with Tom yeah. Hanks doing some That's solid brilliant. Tom Hanksing. That was you fantastic. pick a bunch of holes in it. After yeah, that. shame about those inaccuracies. Though. Yeah, but no, that's if you if you do what I did then that's, that's the nature of the beast. It didn't, I did say at the time, it didn't stop me enjoying, enjoying the film. Mm -hmm. And that's Nathan generally, because I just watched Tom Hanks with just a warm glow in my, in my heart because it was Tom <laughs> Hanks being Tom Hanks. So yeah, I enjoyed Greyhound. It passed some nice time. And do you know what? I watched it again. So that is about only, the, only film of 2020 and you watched it twice. So good. Ed no, I did watch some. I mean, I watch, I've watched, you know, I watched the Mulan and, uh, uh, thing on Disney and uh, I've watched some of the Netflix ones. But I, you asked for one film, Greyhound. Okay. I enjoyed it okay. the most. I'm really struggling. I'm, uh, I, Tom, what about you? Uh, no, can you come to me last? Because I've got loads and I'll, no, I'll, let, other one. People, one. I'll let other people say the things that I'm going to say and then All I'll right. choose my obscure one at the end. Okay, but when we come to you, you've got one. Uh, okay. Steve? <laughs> I think my favourite film of the year was The Invisible Man. I'm surprised. I was nice. I'm glad Tom yeah. mentioned it earlier, but I went into that film. Well, I watched it at home, but um, I went into it um, 
not expecting very much. And I thought it was superb. I thought it was a really mm. clever take on the idea. I thought it was really tense. I thought Elizabeth Moss was delivered a fantastic performance. The whole cast was great. Uh, it's nice, you know, $7 million and you can deliver the goods. You haven't got to spend $200 million. It's a really, really good film. Uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and I, want, I'm, I think Lee Whannell's a really good writer-director. Yeah, that's, spoilers. Great, that's, great. that's hitting our best of list. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, right. yeah, it was awesome. It's a great uh, film, yeah. Kaz... Well, Again, I've, seen, one. I've seen a new one, so I'm going to go with that. The review's not up yet. It's it's out Friday. Let them go. Uh, and I, I think it's absolutely aces. It sounds like my kind of thing, because it sounds like a three-word title for a Seagal film. Uh, <laughs> and I thought I thought it would be... What, taken, what is it? <laughs> Let them go to the new film with Kevin Costner and Diane Lane. I thought Keep it would going. be taken... <laughs> okay, I thought it would be taken with grandparents from, from the title. <laughs> But it, it's actually brilliant. It's like a, a unbearably tense neo-Western thriller with a couple of the best performances I've seen of the year from Martin Parr's Superman. Um, it's like, it's along the vein of Wind River, Hell and High Water, uh, or Devil All the Time that was recently on Netflix. It's got a dark under, underbelly. I don't want to tell you too much other than it's two grandparents who are concerned for their grandchild. And, uh, and they go above and beyond in that regard. But it's fabulously put together. Really excellent little gem, rounded out the year very nicely. One of the best films of the year. I know it's, I know it's been an odd year, but in a year when we can't even find contenders for the top 10 list, it's easily one of the best films of the year. It's very nice. So that's, that gets my award. I, I'm staggered that you didn't see Tenet. Uh, I really enjoyed Tenet, but it's not it's not Nolan's best. I mean, I enjoyed Tenet because it, Nolan does big screen really well, so you have to see it at the big screen, uh, and it looks spectacular. It oh, doesn't sound so great, come on, but I mean, Cass. the Emperor standing there with his todger w- <laughs> in the wind, isn't he? I loved seeing Tenet at the big screen. Only film I saw at the big screen this year. I Actually, agree. That's not it true, was, isn't it? The early start of the year, we weren't in lockdown. It was, it was a big screen experience. Yeah. It, it was. For all of its problems, it was a big screen yeah. experience. But it, it does have problems. It doesn't have the heart of his other movies. It, it doesn't stand in comparison. I don't think his films ever had much heart. I think he's... Oh, the heart of, of the, the father-daughter relationship in Interstellar or oh, in Inception it. with the kids. Well, like his poor old son. <laughs> Look, he's yeah, like it, Kubrick. Even, his films are emotionally dead and technically brilliant, but that's no, not for an entertaining Interstellar movie. Interstellar, when he's driving away from the daughter who didn't say goodbye to him because she didn't want to speak to him. <laughs> yeah, that got to me. Inception, when he wants to see his kids again. I mean, I think, I think that was enough for me in those kind of movies. Um, but I appreciate Tenet is definitely not his strongest effort. It's blisteringly good ideas really incomprehensible dialogue. intelligibly you know if yeah. you turn on the subtitles it just says unintelligible unintelligible yeah <laughs> and that's the joke isn't it i mean it's it's it, they made some serious mistakes in that but um but you know, i think it wouldn't have done very well even though it hadn't been for covid i think it would have uh, bombed well yeah I, it might, it might, mm, might i don't have been know that it would have same, bombed know, so but... had a big opening weekend and then bad word of mouth would have graduated yeah yeah i don't know that it would have yeah okay i i'm going to agree to say that and it for the had love of huge God, huge will he just pick one aspect ratio <laughs> <laughs> and stick with it? I don't care what one it is, but just pick one and stick with it. Can't Four by three, it is. Can you? You can't. can't <laughs> All right, fine. If he wants to do that, but just pick it. Can't there's, really do that. There's a place that. for four by three. There is a place for it <laughs> on four by three televisions. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we're gonna. No, we're gonna come to my pick in a minute. The there's place for four by three. Up in this one, isn't it? Or right. I'm thinking of ending things. Yeah. Um, oh God. Good, I can put the popcorn away. Right, uh, Tom, what was your choice? <laughs> uh, I was going to talk about I'm Thinking of Ending Things, which is a, a, clever, fi- is a clever film that clever people like, um, but I'm not going to talk about that. Um, Do one. <laughs> <laughs> I like Charlie um, Calvin, but I would not watch 4 by 3 not in not 2021. <laughs> uh, I'm going to move on. I'm not, I'm not going to engage. I'm not going to engage. Um, I, I think, I can't believe that we've, gone this whole time without anyone mentioning Parasite, which uh, has obviously had all the recognition it deserves. That was, that was last year. That was it? last year. It came, it was it, UK release was this year. Thank you. Yeah. As a UK yeah. release it was this year. Um, and the same with The Lighthouse. Um, I saw The Lighthouse. So the you're technically correct. Time. The best kind of correct. 
<laughs> the best kind of cat. Okay, if we don't want to do parasites, do the uh, the Five Bloods, which is Spike Lee's best movie in years. Um, it's uh, like a, a perfectly executed blend of Vietnam movie, buddy comedy, treasure hunting adventure, family drama, homage to the golden age of Hollywood. It just chucks it all. Aspect right. ratio changes. Yeah, <laughs> damn them all. Um, it's and like. Uh, I'm thinking of ending things. It is a movie that smart people understand and like. Um, <laughs> and I'm not going to take that back. That's going to be no, my one those best performance in years as well. It's, he was it was superb, so well executed. Like um, every nice element. See Chadwick Boseman before he passed away. Mm. I know, exactly. And a lot of the complaints that um, were um, on the forums, at least around the time when it, uh, it came out, talked about how the the score sort of um, beat down on the dialogue for a lot of it um and it does and and it's a little bit of, over the top at some scenes i thought yeah exactly yeah. but like clearly purposefully like just forget what they're saying it's a hollywood movie feel the feelings and like it's spikely playing with what like this golden age of Hollywood was and how it did not include these people. And so again, in terms of like the, the mood of 2020 and as uh, Mark mentioned earlier, kind of the, the Black Lives Matter movement that was going on and in full swing at the time when it was released, it could not have been timed better. And it was, it was just a really well executed, smart, crazy- You know what I like best, Tom? When they do the flashbacks to Vietnam, it's like, should we de-age them? Nah, sorry, just let them yeah. look around looking like fat old men. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's it's kind of like, um, at the time I was thinking, it's, it's, it's unclear as to whether these are the memories of the guys who are telling the stories of Vietnam, or whether it's just the imagining of the son who is hearing the stories and can't imagine these guys as anything other than old men. Like, that's how he knows these guys. So when he pictures the story, they're just the same. They're just old guys, except for Chadwick Boseman. I, I quite like that because Hollywood has a long history of just you going, what, you were there at the Normandy landings? You're, you're about 50, <laughs> you know. So, the, you know, it, it's pretty standard, isn't it, to kind of have older actors and it, it, you're just kind of suspension of disbelief. Yeah, absolutely. And there was no, no issue with suspension of disbelief and it, it totally, it totally worked. And it was both horrendous and hilarious. So, um, yeah, I'm going to say Five Bloods is, is not my top, but probably... Uh, like uh, technically on a filmmaking level is probably the most successful film of the year. Okay. Um, I've just been looking back um, through my lists. I went to see one film this year at the cinema. So that'll have to be my film of the year because I haven't watched anything on TV or Netflix. Uh, Bad Boys for Life. Was so, great <laughs> it was a great film. I really, it was, really enjoyed it was absolutely, Bad Boys for Life. It was another, absolutely. another pleasant surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this space on the DVD box. Best movie of the year, AV Forum. <laughs> <laughs> it was my best movie. It was can the only we, movie I went to the I cinema think to see. That could legitimately be the best film of the year. I mean, we, it's a pretty, you know, it's not been a classic year. So, yeah. can no. we predict in a kind of diehard manner what the next Bad Boys film will be called? The Death. No, I, I think it'll be yeah. Baddest Boys. Good That's Boys. <laughs> bad Boys forever and ever. Yes. <laughs> bad Boys and Son. Two bad, two boys. <laughs> bad boys too. Bad too old boys for this too. shit. Bad yeah. boys. Or, or Frank, maybe just get electric boogaloo. Electric boogaloo. <laughs> Roll it out. Roll bad it boys out. Boys Marx is going on a diet. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry for that one, but that was the only one I went to the cinema to see, and I I haven't actually watched. I've been looking through, and I haven't watched any films. On I'm gonna have to uh, put that right over the Christmas period. Right. Um, a couple of donations have been coming in, so let's mention mm. those uh, before we go any further. So Graham Cartwright, thank you very much, Graham. He donated £2 through Super Chat. He said, thank you for keeping me sane this year. It's our pleasure. We're not... We haven't been it's a low this. bar, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, Stevie DR donated £10. Wow, Stevie, thank you well, thank very you. much. That really thank is appreciated. Um, thank you for all the great editorials podcast this year. You are welcome. We enjoy doing them. I mean, if it wasn't for you guys using AV forums, um, listening to the podcast, and so on, um, 
you know, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much for that. And Condo 007 donated five pounds through Super Chat. It says, thanks for your expertise this year, guys. And if you do one thing after this, seek out run. Misery for the new generation, nine out of ten. Never heard of it. What's it run? What, what's run, it on? What's that Kaz? Yeah, what's that Kaz? Uh, is is he talking about run the TV series? No, I don't I think don't so. I guess it's so. Maybe. Nothing to do with misery, is it? Run all in capitals. What what is that, Condo? Tell us what it is, and, and, we'll, and we'll seek it out. <laughs> yeah, he says it's a film, Kaz. Yeah. So that's that's your department. Sure. <laughs> Off you go. Right. <laughs> Clearly not a very well advertised film. Hulu no film. Ah, well, that's a bit of a challenge. Ah, right. Okay. Uh, maybe American... when Disney Star comes out, we'll be able to see it. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Oh, yeah, Along with all Sarah of the Paulson. back catalogue of yeah, Air Crash Investigation. Yeah. Oh, right. right. Well, Did... talking about Air Crash Investigation, TV show of the year. Yeah. Um, so let's move on to this. So we're going to have another half hour chat on um, Forged and Fire and uh, Air Crash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. We're not. We're not. <laughs> TV show of the year for me. It's the only thing that's made me excited this year and waiting for a Friday. And when Friday comes around, I know I'm going to fire up the projector. Mandalorian. The Star Trek Mandalorian. Discovery. <laughs> Mandalorian. <laughs> followed, followed by Star Tears Discovery. Star Tears. Yeah. Mandalorian is ace. Yeah, it's Mandalorian. Ace. Then Asians of Show, which actually is really, really good this last yeah. season. I'm really Asians. enjoying it. And then Star Trek Discovery is kind of like a, ch- a chore that I just, I'm going to watch it, but I know I'm not going to enjoy it. <laughs> I can't. I've, I've ditched it. I might come Speaking back. Speaking of chores, Raised by Wolves is a bit of a chore too. I can't believe you gave that 10. I cannot believe you gave that 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, neither, neither can 263 others. <laughs> no, quite right. Yeah. I'm, for once, I'm completely with them all. You are, you're out of your mind. It's not for once, Steve. It's not but, for but once. Steve, Steve it's, about, it's about engaging with the community that we have on AV Forums. Or winding and, them up. And winding them is up. It, is it? Gaming the comments. No. That's what it's about. I would, I would never do such a thing. <laughs> game. Ever. No. Everyone on the forum, you've been gamed by Kaz, <laughs> the master troll. But the Mandalorian is awesome. It is, yeah. yeah. It's my team. Brilliant video. second season. If, it if anything delivers. deserves a 10, it's probably Mandalorian. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Race by Wolves isn't a 10. No. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, my not. Guys. credibility is going out the window. But I, but I absolutely loved it as a first season. I just don't like yeah. the rating systems. Yeah, no, I'm with you there. Yeah, no, Mando uh, was great. Mando, no, I, of, I agree. But I mean, the really best episode decided. of TV all year. The the Jedi is the best episode of any TV show all year. Yeah, I, I, I go think with that. last week's. No, I, yeah, I'm absolutely. Yeah. I'm with Steve on this. I thoroughly enjoyed the Jedi, but last week's mm-hmm. had the, a little snippet of everything. It was the way <laughs> it, it basically did brilliantly what ryan johnson singularly failed to do with his dj character and the whole oh you know it's a gray area people sell to the rebellion they sell to the empire this one was brilliant the whole discussion about you know um the the the, emp- the universe needs order and the bit when you realize that they're being chased by the pirates and they've become the empire effectively yeah the whole episode was absolutely brilliant in the way it, 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 it juxtaposed I, I different preferred points it to, of view. I preferred it to the previous week. I thought it was peerless from start to finish. Yeah, no, it was it was a, one of the best episodes. And ginger people deserve more representation yeah. in space. So that yeah. was... Yeah, and, and you, you knew as soon as... Um, a certain spacecraft was going vertical, the two TIE fighters behind. You knew what was coming out the back of that. <laughs> I didn't and, know. And, that, and you knew what was, the sound effect was going it? to be. Slow down, guys. I haven't seen this. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, yeah. We're, we're not going to spoil it. You're in, we're not well, you're spoil in for a treat. You're in for a treat. You're in for a treat. You are, for absolutely. Treat. Yeah. I'm double billing it with tomorrow's. Okay. It, well, and, then I, I'm up, it, and then I'm upping the review to a 10. I would yeah. argue <laughs> that la- last... And dropping last, the review on Raised by yeah, the Yeah, so should I? When it, three, when it hits 300 comments about how it's not a 10, I'll drop it to a <laughs> last, last Friday's episode was my episode of the series so far. I think yes, absolutely. When I, when I, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. It's Although brilliant. I've got to say, Jedi would be a close second because the you know, so good. The I last three episodes have all been superb. I yeah, can't have, detach yeah. the fact I I watched the Jedi episode on the system I've put I I've done for the Christmas week, and obviously it, that does make it the single best sounding piece of television I've watched all year. So that was um, <laughs> the, it, it's hard to separate certain things there. But in terms of just what they got done in the space of time. Um, last week's episode and also someone else someone listening to this podcast will know this the chap who was the imperial officer was also in kingsman 
the first Kingsman film, and I don't know his name, but he is immensely good value to watch. There's a, there was a bit of an internet discussion about uh, about him, um, and you know what? It's gone completely in my head. But uh, uh, I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed to say I don't know his name, but he is always good value. I, I've got to say the comedian. What's his name? Bill. Um, Bill, Burr. Bill Burr. Yeah, he, Bill Burr. He's got a good actor. He oh, really is. He was really uh, good. This and. Um, his role in the King of Staten Island earlier in the year have just shown that he is an actor. He's great. <laughs> he's really good. No, yeah, he's really good. I mean, I so, do want more droids voiced by Richard Ayoade. Yeah, can we, be, can we absolutely <laughs> yeah. be clear about oh this? Oh my god, I watched Michael the... Waititi and either of those guys. They they've got it. Watch the last episode of um, the first season with my son. He's only four, and he cried for about two hours after the droid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Two hours. Why did he have to die? But, but, the, but there was a nice touch, wasn't it? Was it the opening episode, or it was the one where he went back to? Uh... No, the final episode where he where he was an ace. No, I meant I meant yeah, in season right. two. There's actually a it, he's a statue. It's when um. Well, yeah, we have. Every... I haven't taken to, right, to that okay. point. I told him that. Cara June rebuilt him, and we just haven't seen that episode. Yeah. Okay. So they oh, found us saving found up some, helmet. saving you up. Grab your camcorder and some cardboard yeah. paper and start <laughs> working on a new episode. Then. But I, I have to say, probably I would give it to the Expanse. I mean, I love Mandalorian. I'm not at I'm the end of it. Started watching it. But, yet. I'm saving but up. I'm, so, I'm thinking so I might binge I'm, it. I'm too old for this, but I stayed up till midnight and I watched the first three episodes in a row <laughs> at midnight. Did the review. Um, it's a funny old show because it didn't hit the ground running with season one. Um, I suspect a lot of people m- might have turned it off, but it's a really juicy slice of hard science fiction excellence. Um, yeah, and I'm really hoping weekend. I'm really hoping they stick the landing next year and don't Games of Th- Game of Thrones it. <laughs> well, they've got <laughs> books to base this on. They do. Like they Game have Thrones. books. And, uh, and you, you know what? Every season has been mm. more coherent and cohesive than <laughs> Game of Thrones has ever been as as singular seasons. It's really great. I have to do a shout out for Amazon being idiots with their um, ability to search for 4K. The only way I could do it was by going on season three and 4K and then scrolling to the next episode. All of the search, phone, tablet, TV, couldn't find it. I can't work Um, out where they still haven't figured out the simple model that Netflix, Netflix yeah, yeah, just, where they just like, give you the best, best version. Options. It's God, crazy. It's crazy. Based on your your broadband connection and yeah. your television, this is what you get. <laughs> yes, and 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 also, I have to say, the Expanse Amos is just still the best. <laughs> if, if they ever run out, because they're doing one more season, and it's going to be disappointing to see it go. If they want to do a spin off, do a spin off about Amos. Just kicking. Yeah, I definitely watch that. Saying <laughs> prophetic things, swearing, punching people in the face, and looking. Like Talking about women wearing women's shoes. Yeah, he's, he's just absolutely, <laughs> absolutely aces. Right, well, we need to move things along because we are... Um, There's lots we knew, of other people. We knew we were going to go over, but we've still got lots to talk about. But Mark's, <laughs> Mark's been a little bit quiet. Mark, what was your TV of the year? Sorry, I was just following the football. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the boys, um, I, I think... Good. Second half, Mark, of the Second half was good. First half, it dragged a bit. It, it, it struggled to kind of build up to pace from where the first season left off. But Grant Morrison's writing kind of translates very well for these times, I think, as well. It's kind of like Watchmen, but with a very dark sense of humour. And yeah, I really enjoyed that. It's very on point with its whole message, of, you know, like the yeah. virtual arts, these exploding <laughs> heads. And, oh, um, the, switch, the switch... Um, of Stormfront to a woman as well was the right decision. That, that mm. is a good choice. Yeah. And other than that, um, you know what? A, a lot of stuff has seemed strangely dark this year. So I've kind of been looking for things like with Taskmaster or stuff like that, that just feels like a nice kind of cozy blanket and truth seekers on Amazon was just, it, it, it was just mindless fun really it was so much scary fun scary i thought it was going to be so yeah, it much was. fun <laughs> and it gets it goes into malcolm quite mcdowell a... was excellent in it i have yeah. to say yeah. malcolm mcdowell is great value for money but when is, is julian not barrett no turns gag, up... had me laughing out loud <laughs> julian yeah. barrett is not in enough stuff um, no. after his like uh two um, series mind, of Flower... mind horn yeah mind, well, horn. Mind, horn, mind horn is is pretty good but um flowers that he did for channel four a couple of years ago was like singularly the most depressing and hilarious nathan barley like, nathan barley as well yeah. what an underrated guy 
he is. Like, how has how has Noel Fielding been stratospherically catapulted to stardom, and and Julian Barrett well, hasn't? Cakes right? mainly. Cakes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. A willingness to appear on panel shows, maybe. Mm, yeah. But yeah, that that was something just like a kind of nice cozy blanket and and short episodes as well, which I'm starting to appreciate now. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Half an hour is fine, but I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing what you can get in a half an hour. I mean, just look at Mandalorian. You know, they're a half hour, but they feel they feel so much longer. When you've got all those yeah. stock cocks yeah. to turn off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Um, anything else before we move on to the next subject? Any other? Team I would like mentioned? to just throw out because, again, against hope and expectation, it managed to be thoroughly watchable. Was this year's bunch of Top Gear? Um, uh, it wasn't perfect and watching um a perfectly serviceable lamborghini diablo get destroyed was not the yeah. highlight of things but nevertheless uh, i mean mr nippy what a <laughs> what a well, creation he, he owns that as well i know so he that does doesn't he, belong to the bbc it's his, no it, it so. belongs belong, yeah and um but no i i again there is an easygoing chemistry between the three of them um we we've argued this lots of times before if you want to talk about someone talking about the firing order of a v12 you now need to go, yeah, to, go, to, go to youtube that's what, that's it, what is. it does yeah. as a light entertainment program doing something with cars i think that the bbc has managed yeah. to to, yeah. to salve top gear and it's 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 a thoroughly watchable 60 yeah, minutes no, it's time. definitely back to where it should be and and i like the fact obviously with COVID this year there was no studio stuff, so there was no studio guest. I've, I, it works so much better by not having the. Stars I suspect they may car. probably retain that. They, they might, but you know, it, it's so much better for it. And obviously, the grand tour is back on Friday. This coming Friday, your birthday, Ed. Yeah, well, it depends. I, I'm ho- I'm still hoping against hope I might be allowed to go out for that, but we'll okay. we'll, we'll see what happens. But yes, yeah. okay. Anybody it, else? They want to retain. Uh, they want to retain COVID uh, additions for future seasons when there's no COVID. Master Chef having one of the chefs, one of the, you know, one of the presenters off in another room with headphones commenting. Is that really worked good brilliantly. Addition. And they should keep doing that because that's a really good idea. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, obviously, Ma- uh, Master Chef, I'm acutely aware that it's Steve and me and like four other people. I, it, but it's a magnificent television programme. And just watching people do amazing things with food is, I, I never get tired of that, but I am acutely aware that it's a bit fringe. But I, we, we've covered some programs that I've thoroughly enjoyed. I thoroughly enjoy Top Gear as well. Okay, good stuff. Anybody else before we move on, Tom? I'll, I'll say a, a quick thing, a uh, very quick thing. Um, I just want to give a mention to The Good Lord Bird and Lovecraft Country, both of which uh, thread the needle perfectly when it comes to addressing important issues in a smart and entertaining way without the need to smash you over the head with characters simply saying, what's Lovecraft an issue to me? Sorry again? Now TV and Sky. Sky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So yeah, nobody nobody just outright says, oh, I really feel sad about, you know, Star Trek Discovery. But... (laughs) Um, the clear winner for TV this year um, is Tales from the Loop uh, because it did all of that and more. I yeah, forgot about that. It was one of that, I'm afraid. I it, did. I have so, to say, I thoroughly. It was utterly beautiful. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I saw it compared to Black Mirror. I think probably because of its like near anthology format um, and its sometimes like imagine technology but bad moments. Um, but actually, it's kind of more accomplished than that. Um, Did you give it, it a 10, Tom? I didn't. I gave it a no, 9. It doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's, it, it manages to, like, over the course of the season, unfold a single narrative for the, the town where it's set, where all these things are happening behind the stories without having to actually say this is the story. By the end of the yeah. series, you know how it all fits together. The writing of it is just incredible. Um, and the, and and uh, I, as someone that watches it drunk, uh, it just <laughs> it's the just sound. Not just it's just beautiful. Yeah. The the sound and the direction are easily second. one of the most very, beautiful television gorgeous. programs I've watched in a long, long time. No um, question. It's clearly like heavily inspired by. Ray Bradbury with the yes. like the casual linking of like Ray Bradbury had a lot of stories set in um 
Greentown, um, Illinois, and the the sense of like bitter sweetness that runs through the episodes uh, it definitely amplifies that like comparison. But I mean, it's Ray Bradbury's shared universe. He's got that yeah, yeah, essentially, and and you think that none of none of the stories in Tales from the Loop were new science fiction. They were all old ideas, but all of them were told in a way which was just like it put human focus on them. And oh my God, is it just slow? Like not boring, but just slow. Yes, nothing, it, it, it makes you work nothing is it. rushed. Yeah, it takes its time, and the, the town, and the seasons, and the sound, and the choir, and it's all part of the experience of watching it. And um, okay, good. good. Just, yeah. to, just very quickly, quick. it's not a um, not a, a whole. This year's Taskmaster. If you don't, you don't need to watch the whole thing. You just need to find the ep- the ser- the episode where Daisy May Cooper eats watermelon. It's, it is one of the television highlights of the year, mainly because okay. of the noise. Okay, we need to move on because we're, uh, we're yeah, fast getting way over time. So uh, 4K disc of the year. Go to Steve first. And uh, if I'm not back, yeah, you can present the rest of it, Steve, because I need to go. <laughs> oh, we, I assume. Well, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go um, Lord of the Rings. Uh, there's been a lot of great discs this year. It's been one, of the, one of the one of the great sort of side effects, and one of the positive side effects of COVID has been lots of disc releases. Yeah, and because um, uh, obviously there's been no new films being released, so the, so the studios have been putting out a lot of uh, catalog stuff. So we've had like Flash Gordon, Amazing Total Recall, um, Crash stuff. I probably wouldn't have thought we'd see, but for, for me, Lord of the Rings just delivered on every level. Uh, the films are genuine. I mean, it's a remarkable achievement by Peter Jackson just to get those things made, and the fact that they're as good as they are. And they look gorgeous, and um, I mean, we've and, had and some... they sound great too. So, oh uh, yeah, I'll second that. That's title. definitely that's definitely my release of the year. It, they couldn't look better, as far as I'm concerned. A, a, like a masterpiece film or series of films, and it never looked better. It uh, the only thing that comes close to it for 4K release is probably Jaws, which was just so much fun. But that yeah, was, that wasn't this year, was it? I think so. Was it not? No, that was last year. Was it? No, no the, last year. Was Jaws it? Was it this year? year? Yeah, Jaws. Jaws. This year. So, it- so on the list this oh, year, I think completely year, forgot I've about got, Jaws. So that was last I've year. I've got Jaws, yeah, which right. is the top ten contender. Uh, top Gun, Lawrence of Arabia, Psycho, nineteen seventeen, uh, Tremors, the Back to Future trilogy, and yeah, Flash Gordon. <laughs> So it has been, it has been, it has been it, some you're fast absolutely cracking year in Catalan terms of vocals. re-release of, in terms of correctly releasing older material. Yeah, um, it has. It, it, it's the irony because you know you have to adapt and improvise, overcome Bear Grylls, yeah. all the rest of it. They, the, the, we, we. I'm sure that most of these things would have seen the light of day anyway, but yeah, they but, have at the very least put the effort in. Yeah, and having, we probably had the time to enjoy them as well. Having Arrow jump on 4K ditch the blu-ray that comes in 4k sets stick all the extras and more on the actual 4k disc stick dolby vision on there and go above and beyond on things like pitch black uh they they did recently crash dawn of the dead dawn of the dead they did king of new york um, i've still got to see cinema paradiso as well (laughs) which i'm really looking forward to I mean, they've done a, a superb selection and they've only just started. They only started, what, mid-year? Yeah. So yeah. Um, Second half so, of the year? Yeah, I think Criteria but I, I like, I like the temp I like the template that they that that they hold so long as the ability to play the damn things um, holds up. That I like what they, they hold the promise for, for where um, cinephile film releases Okay. Yeah. To be. I think most film releases are going to end up going to these boot, boutique titles because the studios yeah. are starting. Well, Disney obviously. Yeah, you made just need someone to, to keep making players. For the no, aliens. <laughs> no aliens. No aliens. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. Can I just say uh, you haven't mentioned it, um, and I, it's not like I've ordered it yet because I don't have a 4K Blu-ray player. But um, <laughs> the fact that, that minor point aside, <laughs> no, just details. But the fact, the very fact that that Mad, as you say, Mad Max, Mad Max a four hundred thousand dollar film great disc. Yeah. that's yeah. scrubbed up, yeah. as well as that, um, I think that's magnificent. Yes, it has been a, a great run. I mean, I, I missed out on covering all the Columbia films, all the Hitchcock films, all the Lord of the Rings films. Didn't get any of the sets and. Didn't watch Kubrick any of films. Them. Yeah, Kubrick films. Um, but I've had some really beautiful gems that I've enjoyed, like revisiting Mad Max, it, even watching Blade. I mean, Blade might have shoddy effects, but what a soundtrack. Now, that's, that's some bass charts that we've looked at there. 
I mean, that, that was that was a fantastic disc. There have been some great choices this year. We've got seven minutes to go. We're going to be ice skating uphill to get there before the end. <laughs> Uh, no, I, th- I think we can go over two hours. I mean, Stuart will tell me in, in my ear if well, it's like Christmas case, special. And it's not like yeah. who cares? Yeah, <laughs> we've been given the go ahead, and we've I've got more beer. I've I, I, I got the beer fridge running a couple of days ago, actually. So it's fine. Yeah. Okay. So who's in for the the, the long run? <laughs> <laughs> oh, whenever I watch uh, like Kevin Smith's Fat Man Beyond, that goes on for like two hours and forty minutes. Does so. it really? Yeah, <laughs> we'll try not to be that long. But yeah. um, right, so where did we get to with four K discs? Because obviously, I, had to I think we've mostly we've done our four Ks. You've just got to do yours. Okay. Still. Well, well, mine's is Jaws. Yeah, um, see, there you go. Yeah, yeah. 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 I forgot it came out this year because I remember I saw yeah. it at the cinema last year when they had that cinema release. Yeah. And that confused me. It has been complicated because this year has been three hundred months long. Yeah, so. this year is also <laughs> a strange year where I can't remember much. And I've watched so many discs because that's basically much all I've done for the entire year. Well, you see, um, I used the uh, the the DVD which had the the original uh, um, Water Park, the Watergate Pass, wasn't it? What they did for um, the D, the the Blu-ray. Um, and I used that as a test uh, for TV tests. And I've used it for years since the Blu-ray came out. And just having the 4K version, what a jump up. And I mean, it looks absolutely beautiful. And I always use the beach scene, Chapter 5, um, which starts with, uh, uh, it, it just opens on the beach. And uh, you've got... Uh, Sorry, we had a voice in the intercom. No, there. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got uh, Chief Brody sitting on the beach, obviously, and and the, the the cuts as people walk past them and all that kind of thing, and uh, it just looks fantastic, absolutely brilliant. The grain structure on that cars, um, it just looks beautiful, and sometimes 4K grain structure can look a little bit much, um, in some of these restorations. But on that, it just looked absolutely beautiful. It looked yeah, spot yeah, on. Stunning. Rather have oh, that than have them yeah. scrub it completely. No, absolutely. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So that'd be my choice. Right, so let's move on from 4K Disc of the Year. Let's move on to the best Christmas movies and TV shows to watch this year. They can be Christmas movies from any period in time um, and TV shows from any period of time. What is it that makes Christmas... Uh, for you, what is it that you like watching at Christmas? What does it have to be? Does it have to be a Bond movie? Does it have to be... Um, Shane Black Charlie? movie? Yeah. What is it for you? And and I'm going to go first. I'm going to say the obvious one, because uh, I've been mentioning it all week on my Facebook. <laughs> and that is, uh, obviously, Fandom did a, a scientific test as well on this. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. It is, yeah. It is a Christmas movie. It's my choice of Christmas movie. Um, it's not. Cause... It's not open for debate, is it? It happens at Christmas. There's a Christmas tree. There's a Christmas party. There's oh, well, if you, have, if you haven't seen that, uh, you haven't seen fandom. Uh, their video. Um, they go through. They do it scientifically. They count every <laughs> reference, every decoration, every time the word Christmas is mentioned. Every time. And, <laughs> and it's, it's, really it's like saying, "Is Home Alone a Christmas movie?" No one said like they. <laughs> they barely mention no, Home Alone Christmas. isn't that Thanksgiving. I think Home Alone Two is a Christmas movie. Home Alone. Uh, no, Home Alone is a Christmas movie. movie. Is it Christmas? <laughs> yes, it's Christmas. I've never, yeah. I've never, I've never seen either of them. On his way to the house. <laughs> never seen yeah. either. No, it is a Christmas movie. But then the debate is, um, is, it a, is it a Christmas movie as in it's a movie that you watch at Christmas, not necessarily set at oh, Christmas? Oh, man. Or does it have to be set at Christmas? It. You've never seen Home Alone, really? Really, really? No interest. You are missing some of the greatest slapstick comedy. I, I, I watched like it. I watched it for the first, uh, not for the first. I watched it with a five-year-old who was watching it for the first time, and watching him watch it was one of the <laughs> most rewarding yeah. experiences. You just pointed of my out life. that's the film's target audience. Five-year-olds. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so good. It's I was so an adult good. when it came out. So I had no interest. Even so, even so, it, it's I that, it was written by John Home Hughes. Alone is like top five Christmas movies. Easy. Easy. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's, Shane Black films. It's, it's, different Sorry, for, it's different for different people, isn't it? Go ahead, Mark. Where else can you see a man stick his foot down onto a nail and have that be the big laugh? <laughs> you know? Imagine if in a quiet place that was a big laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Being hit in the face with an iron. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so- Speaking of um, uh, internet people who do scientific explorations of movies, there is a, a great uh, exploration of the, the um, 
fatality rate that should be in home alone the the, the lethality that of each of uh, kevin's <laughs> traps is uh incredible i i recommend you seek it out well it's just been pointed out uh, that we haven't reviewed home alone do you fancy that one steve 4k desk oh sod off i don't want to review it. <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you what the best christmas film ever made is it's a christmas story which is absolutely brilliant i hate that movie I hate that movie, Steve. I love the way that he spends the whole film wanting his Red Rider BB gun. Everyone goes, no, you're not having that. You'll shoot your eye out. And as soon as he gets it at the end of the film, he knows he shoots his eye out. I don't get it. Everyone everyone in that movie is a dick. I don't understand why people... That's the the point. It's the true spirit of Christmas. When they're in the Chinese (laughs) restaurant and they're all singing... The Chinese waiters are singing Christmas carols. I don't know any of the words. And they're just going... No, 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 no. No, that's, that's not cool. That's not aged well. I watched it for the first time last year. And I was like... This is not for me. I, I like Christmas movies, but this is not for me. Yeah, it's a great film. <laughs> Christmas movies for me. Christmas. Oh, obviously, the obvious Christmas film is It's a Wonderful Life. That's the perfect Christmas movie. Uh, I, t- I mean, I, I only read... Not a life a minute, man. I only discovered that recently, but I've always you, associated... And, and I stole the disc off you afterwards. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, I saw it when it came out. Fast and cinema. Furious film. <laughs> It fast well, Steve, 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 in, in the, the cinema, cinema Steve was really terrified when the train <laughs> came towards him. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw it a number of years. In fact, I probably saw it when I was a child. It's a wonderful life. And it used to be a regular on on uh, TV at Christmas time. So I'd seen it umpteen times, but it does look beautiful on 4K. It was really nice. Oh my God, did you borrow that for last Christmas? I did, yes, and I've still got it. <laughs> Along with your Fast and the Furious boys, yeah. yet, Kaz. <laughs> well, you see, I wanted that back for the next film, and with <laughs> COVID, that's been delayed, so you've got forever. All right. I'm Can I do derail a... the conversation slightly by saying that I've noticed on the 4K for It's a Wonderful Life, it says it's an HDR, and uh, how, how exactly does that work for black and white? Yeah. I'm, I'm a it's novice. It's not just these colours, things. it's also yeah, just colours. It's, it's, range it's, of peak it's all about whites, the dynamic yeah. range. So it's from, from white right. to black. And... But, like, this is obviously from a layman's yeah. perspective. Yeah. Well, I, mean, like, it, it, I, only, I only know it as a, a colours thing. Okay, yeah. cool. But, but the thing is, it does, it, just because it says HDR, that means it is presented within an HDR container, which means it could go to 10,000 nits or it could go to 200 nits. It all depends on how. Uh, the grader and the director wanted to obviously the director's long dead but uh, it depends on the grader who's doing the regrade as to how much they they use or utilize hdr um so i found it, out recently that a knit is the equivalent of a candle in a meter i like that can, candela meter square that candela, has yeah. infinitely amused me infinitely <laughs> I, lo- I love that information that uh my tv is as as bright as however many hundred candles awesome <laughs> squared <laughs> Squared. Yeah, meter squared. Yeah, meter squared. Yeah, not cubed. Because <laughs> light yeah. is only does, in two D. Light goes up, doesn't it? Like, is it meter squared <laughs> or meters cube? Light's not like flat, is it? Mark, what's your uh, <laughs> choice for Christmas movie? Um, I mean, the the standards. Um... No wolf and cub. Have you having a merry Christmas? No. no, if I was picking one of those, it would be White Heaven in Hell. But no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Good choice. That, that's snowy. Um, yeah, it is. You're right. Muppet Christmas Carol. I, I'm <laughs> I'm happy to die on the hill of saying that that is Michael Caine's greatest performance. It is. Yes, I agree with you. It Kaz. brings a brings a that's tear right. to your eye. <laughs> in a similar vein, I'd also put in as a TV thing. Blackadder's Christmas Carol. That's also yeah. Good. That's a good. I'm a bit of a Christmas Carol connoisseur, and that that's up there. That one, the Patrick Stewart uh, Christmas Carol, the Alistair Sim. If you were going to say Patrick Swayze for a second, then for some reason, <laughs> boy, oh boy, just a choice for Scrooge. I would have oh, watched Scrooge. that. <laughs> um, any any rendition of a Christmas Carol um, is good. Bill Murray Scrooge is definitely on yearly rotation in this house. That that is a good movie. Um, and I was mistaken for the longest time in thinking the cab driver was Benicio del Toro, but of course Benicio del Toro would have been no, way too lead, young. It was the lead singer of you're, the New York Dolls. David you're Bain. right, you're right. And Johansson, when I looked at Johansson, when I looked it up, I was like, yeah, of course it's that guy. But when you look at him, he is the spit for Benicio del Toro at that age. It's it's um, uh, that's not my answer. Up at Christmas Carol is my answer. That's obviously the best Christmas movie bar none. Okay, well, can we I also re- can I just say? That can I just say one that uh, some people might not have seen? I 
55 or 45, I forget what it was. I think it was 55. We're No Angels. The the original with um, Humphrey Bogart, Peter Ustinoff and Aldo Ray. Not the Neil Jordan remake. <laughs> no, it's about three convicts who escape from Devil's Island and it's set around Christmas. And it's 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 got a... a uh, a snake in a box called Adolf, and yeah, it's it's good fun. It's it's really good. I enjoy it. Okay, good stuff. Ed, what's yours? Oh, Ed, we can't hear you. You're mute, Ed. Oh, you're muted. Uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I still love that film. I mean, the point where they uh, uh, do we do spoilers on a film which is what thirty odd years? Uh, yeah, the, cool, cool. The, for Chris, it. the Christmas lights and the turkey cutting sequence still have me howling to this day. Um, <laughs> just both them fantastic, and then um, completely against character because I hate horror movies. My background, I absolutely adore. Door Krampus, and I think I do so purely on the strength of the cast assembled to do it. Um, I will quite happily watch Tony Collette in most it, things. I think it's one it's of those sort of scary Christmas things, a bit like Gremlins. You know, I think it's absolutely fabulous. I genuinely, I, I, I watched it and I and adored practical it. Practical effects, which I really like. And yes. Krampus is a good Christmas thing that exists. Oh, yes. Just Can I also say, if if we're talking about TV, the uh, was it American Dad episode of, with Krampus in, uh, voiced by Charles Bradley, was brilliant. Really I've not good. seen that. That sounds. I've seen that. I've, I've seen yeah. the I've seen the Jane Fonda Christmas one uh, from ages ago. You know where he goes back in time to try and kill her and and ends up changing the timeline so Walter Mondale became president and so on <laughs> and so forth. But. Um, <laughs> But no, I didn't. I, as I say, I normally detest horror movies. I adored Krampus, and the sequence at the end with the bauble is just phenomenal. Love it, absolutely fantastic. So those are my choices. You've covered yeah, lots of other. It's not scared to well. go dark, is it? No, but like equally, it. it's not unnecessary. It's not like watching, um, you know, some of these other things where it's just un. un unnecessary organ fest and i don't mean that in a pornography way it's just horrible i i think it i think it's perfectly balanced i think it's an absolutely brilliant film and i love it and it is a properly good christmas film it is fun it is a good movie uh, like we've we've also mentioned like um black adder's christmas carol good tv uh, american dad good tv it's super worth mentioning the 30 Rock Luda Christmas episode. Yes, actually, that beautiful is beautiful Christmas TV, as is the community episode, which is a pastiche of Glee. And I've forgotten the episode um, name and number of it now, but look it up on Netflix. There is the greatest pastiche of Santa Baby, um, sung by Alison Brie, um, the I'm a Silly Christmas Baby song, which is just awesome so i i highly recommend you seek both of those out for christmas watching that's I a lot of christmas viewing there that would cover most of your day if you wanted to do them all mm. I, know, I know die hard's the choice but i'd probably edge lethal weapon maybe even lethal weapon 2 i think they're both it's kiss bang bang and yeah and then i just that movie pretty then much. i just end up doing doing all the shame Iron Man three. Well, yeah, Iron Man I, three. i'm just gonna antagonize <laughs> phil here by saying as far as i'm concerned die hard right. two is a better christmas film than die hard one we've yes. we've done this ed we've been here what, you're wrong no, 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 no. how well, is we've it been a better here. christmas movie because it's got snow in it <laughs> well i will look you forward right. yeah. <laughs> let's get this move on <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Um, so these are some choices. I've been looking through the chat as well. It looks like a lot of you in there. Um, I've also, I've also, <laughs> fall asleep, but also got some some of your favourite movies in there as well. So uh, yeah, some good choices there. Right. So um, let's move on to the last subject, which is 2021. We're all looking forward to it. Um, we're all looking forward to just getting out of 2020. To be honest, it doesn't matter if there's movies coming out or anything. We just want 2021. But obviously. There's a load of uh, movies that need to be released. They're, they're, they're piling up. If they're not hitting streaming, then they need to come out in the cinemas. And hopefully we'll get back to cinema at some point. VHS. <laughs> what, what, what movies were you looking forward to in 2020? Copy and paste. That's basically what yeah, we're looking forward to yeah. in yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I can't even remember what's still to come out, so I'm useless at this one. But Dune, Top Gun, Black, Black Widow. Widow. Oh, Ghostbusters. 
Ghost yeah, afterlife. Busters, that yeah. might be okay. It's got Finn the Hardest Wolf in it. That might be all right. It's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with releases. Like, are they are they going to go to HBO Max and then we get them in the cinema? Does that mean we won't get them on streaming in the same way that? They yeah, get I Max? think it's, I think we're going to get cinema only for the HBO Max double, which is, which is a bit of a pain because well, we have to get to... cinema only because there isn't HBO Max in this country. So yeah, and they're, and they're not going to license it off to Sky like they do with their other. No, no it, not, not it, we're just going to get the cinema release. I'm I'm positive. James Bond. That's okay. No. No. <laughs> I'm yeah, pretty... like three times this year that film, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I just I'm, I don't know. I I, I've not not been terribly excited about any of these latter, Daniel. It, because I, I guess it, it's hard to separate for me, and I, I it, the, the 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 sense that he considers these things uh, a massive paycheck slash obligation. Yeah, he hates them. Yeah, he um, does. Yeah. Slitting his wrists with razor blades. It doesn't. It doesn't. It just doesn't. Said, it, doesn't it? it doesn't. It doesn't. I, I've not. I've not <laughs> seen a hundred dollar bill. I've <laughs> neither seen very expensive razor blades. I haven't watched Spectre yet, let alone this thing. Like, I just good for you. Good no, for you. No, Ed, you're not the only one. I you know. I have no interest. If in you want, if you want to watch Craig a Bond, Bond film that ties up all of the other Bond films that were never supposed to be tied together in an incomprehensible plot. With Christoph Waltz in slippers with no in slippers socks. with no socks, <laughs> then you, you got it. Go screw that. The well, least threatening <laughs> those, in yeah. cinema history. Want, there was enough of that in Skyfall for so. me. I can't. No, I'm not. I'm not bothered. Go James real. Bond has had his day. I'm. I'm ready for James Bond to die. To be honest, he no, can. No, you know. No, well, assuming he's got no time to die. So. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I mean, I'm fascinated because obviously I've seen in the trailer that No Time to Die, they've managed to get a Maser- Maser- an original Maserati, not an original, sorry, the horrible 90s Maserati Quattroporte actually running to shoot at, which, I mean, that is in its own way. Uh, that, that competes with any special effect. But um, I don't know if that's enough to encourage me to go to a cinema. So, uh, you know. Well, that's going to be interesting, isn't it? Is what will encourage... I mean, obviously we it's going to take i know there is now vaccines but it's going to take months to distribute this six no, you months mean you're looking, you're Dude, looking. your honest answer the only film in this whole list because as you know i'm not big on cinema so i am the low if you like i'm the lowest bar of the six of you six of us um is do is that's the only one where i think it's worth it to go and see it on the big screen yeah, yeah straight, and straight um, if you move forward to may june time just it's the only film the... that would get me to go to the cinema next year yeah um, otherwise, i mean first of all i go to the cinema i get the mandalorian in my you know at home Make sure it's about 50 other tv shows coming by the looks of it yeah so, so I mean, uh, yeah I, I agree with you there steve Ed, so you you're looking at July, right? Let's let's be conservative. If you look at July, I think for, that's the, that's being summer. very. I think you're right. Summer. Yeah. I, I think, think July summer. might be too soon. I think we're looking at. I've, I think it's going to take because some of these things take you know two jabs as well. So, when are you getting yours, Steve? <laughs> you're, you're, I had it last week. <laughs> Ted's first one. <laughs> uh, you know, oh, I reckon, I reckon oh, probably October time. Is, is magnificent real. bastard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, but I think obviously if you're looking, um, I think summertime, and, and I'm going out on a limb here, but I think summertime will be a, a, a point where there's enough people vaccinated and it will have re, you know, receded because it did over this summer. And I would expect the same thing. So I'd expect more people to be going to the cinema over the summer. Um, but and will I, they go but, in large numbers well, is the question. I don't know. Yeah, well, more people going to the cinema is going to be relative you know you've got so many people and then anything above zero is more people (laughs) so many i I think i think i think you'll be closer to to normality by that well the the worry by next summer is that there is going to be a lot fewer cinemas to show films in Mm -hmm. um cineworld already in financial trouble before corona um and they make up I'm going to invent a percentage. Uh, 73.2% of uh, UK cinemas, um, they, they're in serious trouble. And if they don't reopen, I wouldn't be hugely surprised. And so we're looking at a massively reduced um, capability for showing these films. So all of these directors who have... Who have and I'm, 
to make my position clear, I'm 100% behind them. I think the cinema experience is hugely important and it's always been important to me, but they are slightly shooting themselves in the foot, I think, by waiting this long, because what you're going to have is a slew of blockbuster movies all coming out in a short space of time at a reduced number of cinemas. Yeah, earning not as it depends. Much money There's too as many films should. all out. I mean, you can't go and no one's going to go and see every single release. Like right, got like you know twenty Except big you. big budget huge film. No, I'm not going at all. I'm done with the cinema. And, uh, and Disney are dumb as heck if they think that Black Widow is going to be top of people's priority in that situation. In <laughs> right, it just isn't. Yeah. Um, no, Black Widow is going to go to bullet. Disney Plus. I'm pretty sure of that. They should have bitten the bullet early on. Same at the same time they did Mulan. Uh, but hey. We'll we'll see how it I goes. Reckon I reckon they'll do it next year. I think they'll do do Disney Plus, and that makes sense. They'll tie. I'll tell you what. They'll they'll tie it in because isn't I read somewhere that um, Florence Pugh's character in, in Black Widow is going to be in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So oh, they want these things. Yeah. To, they want these things to tie in together. They need to get Black Widow out before Falcon and the Winter Soldier airs, which is on the nineteenth of March. Oh, honestly, yeah. so, I, I I think that the savior point. Looking at this list for. Um, uh, cinema comes on the 22nd of October with uh, the G.I. Joe Origins movie. I mean, <laughs> frankly, yeah. that's that's the point where it all turns good. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, it, it, obviously there's some interesting points of view and people have got their own opinions and so on about how things are going to go, whether they're going to go back to the cinema and so on and uh, and so much. But uh, the, what is uh, happening is that a lot of these studios, especially Disney, have ve- have said that Disney Plus is the platform that they are going to put the majority of their that resources into. That is obvious by what they announced this week. Yeah. So what? Of... So you, you did your, your spreadsheet, Steve. I did. So I had to write gonna... it all down. There was so much stuff I had to literally write down. So in terms of, oh, well, first of all, we should, I thought I mentioned it earlier, but Star Star is going to be a, a, a an adult, as in, you know, older content. Fif- 15 term. plus. Basically. All, all the adult, crash I investigation you can eat. Yeah, but all, all the Fox movies, all the old, you know, mm-hmm. things like Die Hard or Aliens, whatever, you know, that stuff's going to be on that. And it's going to be Deadpool, available finally outside the US. It's going to be something we get first for a change. Mm-hmm. Um, we just have to put in uh, a code to access it for, for adults. And, um, and I think they're going to increase the price by two quid, which frankly, I'm happy to pay because I think the service is, pretty, is, is an excellent service and it's pretty cheap already. It's a fiver, isn't it? Yeah, the back catalogue that they're going to release is... Huge. Yeah, Obviously. it's it's, it's worth. Uh, I, I mean, I I even I'm not contesting it, and as you know, my television is is largely an object that just sits there gathering dust. So, so. that's good news. Um, you're going to get much more uh, adult orientated content as well as all the kiddie stuff. So brilliant. Um, the Disney are obviously you know Disney Plus is the only thing making any money for them at the moment, so they're going to go in for this you know balls deep so we've got already got the mandalorian seasons one and two season three is going to be december of next year they've already planning a a soka series a lando series so we've got a whole year to wait after this one's done yeah but in the meantime we're going to get uh, at least uh something else well it's going to be cassian andor series that we've all been wanting (laughs) also cassian lando and or obi-wan Come on, guys. Obi Wan. Better titles. Obi Wan sounds tremendous, though. Well, they, yeah, they, the, only, the only problem with, uh, with Obi Wan is that obviously they, they're going to bring Darth Vader back to it. But my understanding is. Played and I've, by Hayden Christensen. Christ. Christ. <laughs> but, but, but is that no. in flash? Is that in flashback or is that in real time? Because my understanding was that um, end of uh, Revenge of the Sith to A New Hope, they never meet again. Yeah, but no, you've got to look. If you look at Hayden Christians Hayden Christensen now, he does not look like Anakin Skywalker circa Revenge of the Sith. He he has age. I don't want to say he's aged badly, but he looks different. And so they would have to do some serious work to him. He's got a look that you'd call former child star. Yeah. Yeah. He's not like think... he's not like Edward Furlong level, oh. but <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna fudge it, aren't they? I mean Lucas never wrote them in any kind of sensible way. Yeah. No, Just the, cribbed the, off a Kurosawa there's, there's, movie, jumped halfway through, you there's know, a huge in amount of, res, there's a huge amount of sort then, of fan fiction stuff between um, yeah, between... yeah. So they'll they'll make something up. I mean, they, it's because everyone's getting hung up on the line that something like uh, it's been ages since I last saw you, or I mean, they, they they'll just make it up. It doesn't matter. Yeah, they do Love lots it. of stuff. They'll be fine. 
They brought they, they, could, they could chuck in, in the Boba Fett. Yeah. They could chuck in Boba Chuck in Maul. Just yeah. reaching for my No, they can't chuck in Maul because they've killed him in Rebels. Yeah, but <laughs> they could uh, chuck in something in uh, that. Maul will come back, for sure. He's indestructible. Oh, yeah, they cut him in half. Half of him. He's still going to come back. There's two of him now. Anyway. I was just reaching for my comics because with the the name drop at the end of uh, the Jedi episode of The Mandalorian, well, which made me cream. We might get this. That's a very personal... Well, okay, the Ahsoka series is going to be basically her search for Ezra from the end of Rebels. It's going to be a... And then what they're talking thing. about doing is they've got the Ahsoka series and um, Rangers of the New Republic, which is going to be, I think, something to do with Cara Dune. But these three series, The Mandalorian, Ahsoka, and Rangers of the New Republic are going to dovetail into a, a sort of get-together series like, like they did with Defenders with um, on the Netflix shows for Marvel. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's going to involve Grand Admiral Thrawn. I want uh, Thrawn to be the new Thanos. I, I cannot I'm, wait. <laughs> I'm hoping Lando involves... Um, um, what's his face? Not... Not Billy D. Williams, or maybe Glover. a minor role, but since he Don, can, sorry, Don Donald Glover, Glover yeah, because Billy D. Williams could barely walk, so we need, we need someone a bit more active. Um, <laughs> it, didn't, Andor, it didn't stop the Irishman, let's not forget. <laughs> <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi, uh, um, The Acolyte is the new series that uh, Leslie Headland's doing, which is apparently a set during the High Republic, so basically it's Knights of the Old Republic stuff. Um, that should be interesting. Can we be clear about this? All this is stalling. If they mess up Rogue Squadron, I'm Blowing myself up. Ray Squadron in 2023. Does anyone think that's not just going straight to Disney Plus? No, come on. <laughs> Does anyone uh, think that's going to make um, it to the cinema? I'm so- yes, I'm because, sorry. It's yes, got, because if they mess Patty about. Jenkins, Je- if- Patty Jenkins is going to be enough to get that into a cinema, I think. <laughs> If she, they, um, uh, uh, is anyone case, interested? The mechanics, <laughs> yeah. the mecha- yeah. backstory stuff there, and also the thing is that they never messed around. They never messed around the fact that plenty of people died in that. They could go full Rogue One. With they the, could even go to the between movie, like they did for Rogue One, the between movie plot of the assault on Ord Mantell, which is mentioned by name only in the Star Wars films and um it did pop up in um Shadows of the Empire as well. <laughs> you want yeah. to go a deep dive here. Yeah. So oh, right, right, we right. need so help. <laughs> on top of all that we've got the Bad Batch animated series this year. There's also a Visions anime series coming, a Droid Story animated series, Taika Waititi's 2020 I guess in 2025 his film after he's done um, Love and Thunder. What's interesting is uh, strangely you no know, mention of Ryan Johnson's trilogy which I'm glad to <laughs> Say so it disappeared off the face of the earth. That that was axed quite a while ago now. I yeah, think. No, yeah. He, uh, yeah. With, um... oh, but, uh, anyway, so there's a boatload of stuff coming. What, to Disney three Plus films of Star a very Wars slow related. chase across space. It would be... Shut up. Last Jedi is the best Star Wars film, but Empire Strikes Back. No one can say differently. Eat my scrotum. End of Get the out. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> As I right. said. Um. Yeah, so that's that's it. Uh, you, you're getting all the Star Wars basically. It's like they did the HBO Max announcement, and Disney said, "Hold my beer." <laughs> walked out his enormous phallus on the it. table and said, "Come and get what you want, boys and girls." Is any of it in stop motion? That's that's I think the only loophole that they failed to close. Well, this is what I was going to come back to. Who is show running these? Because the Mandalorian has been a success because you've had true Star Wars fans running that show and knowing yeah, what true. they're doing with it. And how are they going to manage all of these new shows? I there, thought there is a danger of quantity, not quality here. Phil, I'd yeah. assumed that they'd contacted you on the sly and you just haven't told us because it's an embarrassingly large no, amount of money. No, they, 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 uh, they couldn't pay me what I wanted. Well, well that, I mean, that's fair well, enough. Well, Faye definitely doing the Ahsoka series, so that's a good start. Right. Yeah, good. that'll be good. Ahsoka, and I think... There is scope for Obi-Wan to be good. There is scope for it to be good. I'm not saying it's going to be Have they good. got Jeremy Corbyn in it? He's a dead ringer for late, <laughs> late scope Obi-Wan. But, um, yeah. But were you not all excited by the announcement of a, an Indiana Jones 5 with Harrison Ford? Nope. Where's it taking <laughs> place? In, in the nursing <laughs> home. I can't believe they're doing that. It's like, really? Where? <laughs> Where's Shia LaBeouf? Because it worked LaBeouf? out so well last time. Where's Shia LaBeouf? That's what I want to know. I want yeah. to see the adventures come of Come on, the, the, the Willow TV series on Disney+. Plus. Oh. You must be up for that. Oh, come on. I, I'm going to hold my hands up and say that I definitely will watch that. I still <laughs> is, is that going to be like a Willow. series or is that a mini-series? Uh, it'll be a, whatever they call it, a special yeah. event series. or yeah. A 15-minute <laughs> <a> <laughs> showreel. <laughs> whatever it is, it'll be quite a short series. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, boom, boom, tish. That was my joke. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. This is not good. You didn't la- <laughs> it's all about delivery, and you delivered that very poorly, Mark. Well, can we talk about your pronunciation of Indiana Jones? <laughs> Indiana Jones. Where did that come from? Is this is this a full Nigella Lawson microwave? <laughs> we call the dog Indiana. <laughs> uh, there is some reason why we don't do this for drink and go on any longer than an hour. Hang an on hour a second. Only, as far as I know, only three of the six of us are drinking. Yeah. <laughs> And what some the, rest, what the other excuses of yours? Well, Mark's got. watching the football. Is the football still on, Mark? What's the score? I'm not, I'm not watching it. I've got the text <laughs> running. All right, okay. Teletext. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, are we done with that then? Are, are we done with the podcast? Well, there's also an absolute shed load of Marvel stuff coming your way. All right, well, go on then. What, what's coming? Oh, blimey. <laughs> right, okay. So next year alone, we've got One Division in January, Falcon and the Winter Soldier in March. We've got Loki in May. There's also going to be the What If animated series, Miss Marvel and Hawkeye in 2021. Then in 2020, they've got the Moon Knight series, She-Hulk. They're doing a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, which I really can't wait for. Uh, and also they're planning Secret Invasion, Iron Heart, Armor Wars, and I Am Group for later in 2023, I guess. And then next year, film-wise so this is what going back to what tom was saying about there's just too much stuff coming out and there's nowhere to show it black widow and may on may the 7th shang chi and the legend of the ten rings on july the 9th the eternals on november the 5th and spider-man 3 um which appears to be everyone's in that including me i believe uh, on spider-man the 3 alfred oh, molina cool. is coming back as doc Ock. Al- alfred molina and everyone else everyone yeah I, okay uh, did, did, did you not get your casting call <laughs> like <laughs> I wish Boy, everybody oh, else did. Like Andrew Garfield and what have you. They, Alfred Molina coming back as Doc Ock has has made my life. I cannot I, wait. I've and, got to say, uh, it's, it's exciting me. If it's if it's a multiverse, uh, I'm in because I, I really yeah. enjoyed the, the multiverse. Yeah, well, it has to be, isn't it based upon the casting? <laughs> yeah, it has to be. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Strange yeah. in the Multiverse of Madness, which is out on the 25th of March 2022. That's directed mm. by Sam Raimi, so I cannot wait to see that. Yeah. Then we've right. got Thor mm. Love and Thunder on May the 6th, 2022. That's the one with uh, they just added Christian Bale as the God Butcher. Uh, Black Panther 2, which apparently won't recast um, to Charlie. It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, and also may not now pass the mantle to Shuri because there's been some controversy surrounding that actress she said something unfortunate she has said something unfortunate oh, I, I, love, I do love it when trouble. people get cancelled that's fantastic <laughs> anyway, but I mean, there's way that... too much stuff coming out and i think yeah. there's going to be a danger of marvel um you know fatigue yeah severe kind of the end game and do we really want to sit through all this stuff we've got year? we've got shang chi and the legend of trying to break into the chinese market and yep. uh as as a marvel person if if you hold your breath for anything over the next couple of years, uh, I would say probably Moon Knight is the new. The What If franchise. series looks really yeah, what, good actually in the trailer. If they, <laughs> Wonder Vision yeah. looks very interesting. I have to say, Wonder Vision does look super interesting. I just mean in terms of uh, new additions to the MCU. Um, mm. Moon Knight um, is probably the character to watch. He's got he's got a, a super interesting backstory, and he is essentially a schizophrenic, and that could be a good series um but marvel are really chancing their arm with some of this well yeah given next year i mean black widow is a prequel will be shang chi i've never heard of him the eternals never heard of him <laughs> spider-man that's the end of next year and that's a sony film anyway mm-hmm. um, obviously sony are using it as a springboard to do their own whole you know whole mm-hmm. um spider-man universe so really it's doctor strange and the multiverse of madness which is not till march 2022 so they've got a long way to keep people yeah. interested and after a year and a year and a Half of nothing. I think people have forgotten. Yeah, well, if you've enjoyed this conversation this evening, uh, two and a half hours worth of uh, the AV Phones podcast with people getting more and more drunk, then please give us a like. It is important um, that you give us I'm a like. I won't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> like to prevent this ever happening yeah. again. <laughs> is is this the perfect podcast, said Graham well, in, Gra- the, in the chat? He, Graham believes it is. I'm, I'm He's just saying that because he won a prize earlier, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, there's lots to talk about movie wise, and with Steve's spreadsheet, there's even going to be even more next year. So, we are uh, probably going to bring you a new podcast uh, in the new year. We are still trying to work out exactly when this is going to happen. We've taken the leaf out of Marvel's book, a podcast for all occasions. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're going to ha- we're going to have sixty four. We've overextended episodes. ourselves massively. <laughs> 
Yeah, 64 episodes have been booked. Uh, right, Steve so- Withers, Origins. <laughs> <laughs> Banker. <laughs> what did he say, Kaz? Banker. All right. <laughs> Either would have been pretty accurate, <laughs> to be fairly honest. <laughs> I'd probably watch that. <laughs> yeah. It could be Steve Withers Origins followed by Steve Withers Banker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Do you want me to do the podcast competition, Phil? <laughs> okay. To win a copy of we are who we are on Blu-ray. <laughs> Just use the following question to select the right answer from the competition page. <laughs> who stars in We Are Who We Are? <laughs> yeah, and uh, and Graham, I've got your uh, your, your Ghostbusters package up, and I'll go in the post. <laughs> He's already posted it. <laughs> That's official. All right. Yeah, I packaged it up. So. That's just holding your package right now, putting it <laughs> straight to YouTube. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, very good. We lost our. Um, we lost his leader. He's just cloned himself and come back completely straight faced. Yeah, we lost one. Um, we forgot to get the uh, experts' view on this, Mark. Uh, Marvel or Star Wars for you? Oh. Um, 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 when it comes to games, Star Wars, uh, films in general, I, I've, I, I do like Star Wars. I, you know, I mean, I've got a Force FX lightsaber in the other room, so you know, <laughs> probably tells you. Um, yeah, I'll go Star Wars purely because Marvel have spurned any chance to use uh, the character of Ghost Rider properly. Yes. Oh, what are you me. talking well, about? He was quite Agents good in Agents of Shield. Ideally. I haven't watched Agents of Shield yet. Well, watch it. It's on Netflix, on Disney Plus. Have you not oh, watched it? Spirit of Vengeance, Mark? That's the best movie that's ever been made. Sorry. <laughs> oh, talking about the best TV. Uh, surely we, we should be talking about uh, Nicolas Cage's The History of Swearing. <laughs> oh, I'm, I, to be honest, I'm, I'm so, so looking that. forward to that bad boy. We should have a podcast a special just about that. He also has. <laughs> He's got a movie coming out in the new year called, I, I'm going to get this wrong, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. He has, has it looks tremendous, Which yes. Which is a Nick Cage it's, movie about being Nick Cage. Yeah, it's, it's going to have him cameoing as all of his best characters, like from Face Off. So and everything. It's just about like, like, <laughs> reprising the role yeah. from Vampire's Kiss. Yep. Yeah, a, a, yeah. a late yeah. career resurgence. Just, he's doing just, a reconnaissance, just, isn't he? Well, I mean, I I, like I'm it. sold. He's, I'm watching it. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, leaning totally. into the insanity now. He is I leaning in. Yeah, you just yeah. embrace it. Just, just run with it. You know, let it, let it. Ten, ten years ago, he turned on the Christmas lights in Bath, and it was one of the most bonkers things I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> he clearly had absolutely no idea what was going on. He <laughs> needs the money. <laughs> he did. He needed the money, but uh, it was brilliant. It was like he didn't know what the hell was going on, why he was doing it, but he just did it. He went, but he just rolled with it. It was very, very fun. <laughs> excellent. Right. Well, we. Uh, that's it. We've, we've had enough. Now. We've done enough. <laughs> We can't go on any longer. It's damage. just cruel punishment. Yeah, I want to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so once again, thanks to uh, Jason Stewart, Graham Cartwright, uh, Stevie DR, and Condo007 for your uh, donations this evening. It really is appreciated. Um, thank you all for Have listening to Have we not got the podcast. podcast competitions to do? It's done. Oh, oh fine. We did oh, it. We did I've, I've, That shows how blind I am now. You yeah, were pay, here. Pay, pay, yeah, you are. I want. Uh, <laughs> right, so... Um, Yes, my thanks this week to Ed Selly. Um, who do you have to screw around here to get a cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit? Carl Adler. No, no bloody holly. Uh, Tom Davies. Christmas is all around me. <clears throat> Steve Withers. And he's got a big knob. <laughs> and Mark Botwright. It's a terrible mistake, chubs. To every one of you who have been listening this year to the podcast and watching Why? <laughs> Uh, like i was saying to everyone who's been listening to the podcast and watching the podcast this year wish you all a safe and peaceful christmas and new year uh hope santa is good to you it'll be any worse than this one no um 
Also, we hope you're all sensible and safe and, and obviously stay within your bubbles, people. Um, if you've enjoyed the podcast, then please give us a like and subscribe to the channel. You can hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything that we publish. And there will be stuff going up onto the YouTube channel um, over the Christmas period. Got loads of review videos and so on that, that will be going up over then. And of and course, it's significantly see- shorter than this. Yes significantly shorter and of course the podcast will be back with myself and steve and maybe a few guests on the 12th of january for ces uh, plus why not leave us a five-star review uh, if you've enjoyed this podcast or if we've overstayed our welcome and uh, also hit the like button and uh, i'm phil hinton thank you very much for watching this year it has been appreciated and we'll see you again next year please drink the-